What's up, folks? How we doing? Welcome to the new Binging with Babish Kitchen, where I'm very excited to offer you a new kind of streaming experience. Uh, we've we've uh, experienced a couple upgrades here, uh, both in the kitchen and the equipment, gear. What's up, guys? How you doing? Babby's in the house. Thank you for following Lonely Bloom. You might notice there's a, there's a tip jar in the corner, and you'll, you can see I'm going to try to line up this glass with the actual tip jar. Where is it? Okay, so welcome. Oh, okay. There's a little delay, so here we go. Add a little further. All right, I'll figure it out. But anyway, welcome to uh, to the new kitchen. And as you can see, I'm, I'm putting my face in the stream. I didn't realize I was doing that until now. I'm looking pretty blown out because of the light. I got to turn down that light a little bit. Okay. Note to self: We're learning. Always a learning curve here. So. Uh, among the many new changes, uh, I want to introduce one of the Thick Boys. I know that you, you, you guys are a big fan of the Thick Boys. And one of them, Sawyer Jacobs, uh, is in the other room. And he is acting as the sort of Raws to my Fraser. Uh, he is uh, 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 going to be fielding your guys' questions and telling me when you guys have, have questions about the stream or about myself or about how to cook some stuff. And uh, Sawyer, go ahead and introduce yourself. He's got his own mic in the other room. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I'll be watching the comments. I'll be letting you know, let me know if the levels are okay. I'm seeing things bounce around all right so far. Very happy yeah. to be here. Very happy to watch those bits drop. I hope you guys appreciate our KCL logo. More of that to come. Anybody and I'll be here a watching. KCL logo. Yeah, and he's going to, oh, good. Almost, it's almost perfect. I just want to get that right on, <laughs> exactly in the right spot. So uh, for those of you guys just turning, tuning in, we are making salmon tonight. We're making two different kinds of fish tonight. We're making fish and chips. We're making salmon crusted with herbs and panko breadcrumbs. Um, let's see. <laughs> hey, uh, Sawyer, Sparks2111 wants to know how your day was. My day was great, Sparks, and W. Buck, I hear you. I turned my mic down a little bit. Let me know if that sounds a little better. But, uh, yeah, Sparks, we had a great day. We've been, we went to B&H. They told us what they could tell us, and we put all this stuff together this afternoon. So uh, it was a fun one for us, I'd say. What do you think, Yeah, Andrew? I mean, it was, I, it was a lot, lot of new challenges. Uh, uh, this, this kitchen's presenting a lot of opportunities and a lot of challenges, and I think we, we had some some interesting uh, obstacles to surmount today, but, but uh, I, I hope that we're going to bring you guys a new level of Babbage streaming experience. Now, this wouldn't be much of a tip jar if, uh, if it were empty, am I right? So guys, uh, help me fill the tip jar. <laughs> um, and I'm going to go ahead and add my own little, t uh, Babby's little tip right here. This is uh, one of my favorites, Angel's Envy, not sponsored, just like it. So don't worry about that. Um, so yeah, again, let us know if there's any issues with the audio, uh, and uh, and let's get cooking, shall we, guys? Thank you for subscribing, Salty Time. Appreciate it. And see now I have this great uh, I have this great feed that shows me that you guys subscribe. Hey, thanks for the tips, thanks for the bits, or whatever those are. I see little pictures of me <laughs> going into the class. That's creepy. Hmm. Here's to you guys. What are you guys drinking tonight? When life give you gives you limes, thank you for subscribing. When life gives you limes. That's clever. Spiced rum is better than whiskey. What the, what, 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 what are you drinking? Spiced rum? <laughs> that, 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 that didn't land. That didn't land the way I wanted it to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did you, are you mic'd with that laugh? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I turned the mic on for that laugh. Uh, all right, thank you. Um, Suntory Toki, somebody has a sharp eye. Oh, that's not what I have here. This is Nika. <laughs> <laughs> Suntory, who's drinking Suntory Toki? I'm going to have a little bit of this later on once we've gotten a little bit further down this rabbit hole. But for now, we're going to prep some salmon, guys. What do you guys think of the, the high shutter speed? See how like manic my movements look? It, it looks like, it's, like, looks like uh, Steven Spielberg, like Saving Private Ryan kind of vibe, like no motion blur. <laughs> Lady Unipotato, thank you for subscribing. Tier 1 sub, thank you. I actually don't know entirely what that means. Um, who is the background boy? <laughs> uh, oh, Jake, they're picking, somebody said that it's picking up cop cars outside your mic. 
Yeah, I keep turning my mic off whenever I can and turning it back okay. on when that's, I choose to speak. So that'll, that's, that'll uh, that's the move. cut down on the street sounds. But uh, we'll welcome folks. to New York City, my friend. You know, yeah, take it in. New York, you know? Take it take in. It Feel it. Hear it. <laughs> and uh, that, that's the move. I, I, and and uh, speaking of moves, for anybody who's just joining us for the first time, this is the first stream out of the new kitchen. And... Um, we got some, 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 some fun surprises in store for you guys. And I know fish isn't the most exciting thing to be cooking, especially in a new kitchen, but I am a recent fish convert. I used to not like seafood at all. And in the past two, three years, I've gotten way into it. And it's one of my favorite ways to make salmon. And who doesn't love fish fry? We're from Rochester, New York, which is known for its Friday night fish fries. And, uh, you know, so th this, this really is some hometown pride and, uh, culinary uh, 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 wonder all in one. I'm noticing that my, my skin looks a little hot. It's, it's a little bright. So I'm just gonna crank down this light just a little bit. I know this is not very pro and I apologize. I'm just gonna crank it down a little bit just so my, my hands aren't reading so hot. There we go. See, that's nice and balanced. I prefer that. What do we think? It's a little bit like sexier in here, a little moodier. Um, Maybe I'll turn it back up just a little bit. <laughs> I'm seeing some people saying they don't like fish. And I feel you, man. Fish is, fish is something that you can get over, you know? You can, you can not like it your entire life, and then you get some really good fish, and you're like, holy shit, I actually like this. It's very exciting. Um, blurry? No, no, th 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 I'm blurry, yes, but you'll notice that the table is perfectly in focus, and that's because this is a new 35 cinema lens I have on this camera here and it has an extremely shallow depth of field. You'll see my hand is out of focus, in focus, out of focus, in focus. Very, so the food's gonna be in focus soon. Speaking of food, how about we get some down on the table, huh? Let's start making some salmon. So you might notice I've got the, uh, the new fridge here. The fridges are kind of these like, this is the fridge. It's so cool, I love it, it's so restaurant style. Um, so I've got cod later for the, uh, Fish fry. For now, I've got some salmon. Enough for two fillets, enough for me and Sawyer for dinner tonight. We're gonna have us a lovely little meal. Thank you for subscribing, Sun Sunam999. Thank you, Supermax, for following. Thank you guys for following. Um, I see bits. Thank you guys for the bits. Samantha, Sitel, Le Le Lex, Lakeser. Uh, thank you. Tip jars looking, looking pretty full. Maybe I'll give it a empty. What do you say? Well, we'll say that again. Should I empty that tip jar? Oh, that tip big. jar is totally full. Let's empty the tip jar, guys. Let's empty it out, baby. Wow, thank you guys so much for all the tips. That's so nice. Thank you so much. And now, you might notice that I'm throwing this salmon directly onto my table, and that's because in the new kitchen, this table, which used to be where the entire show took place, it has now become my gigantic cutting board. So that's, that's what I'm going to use it for here. I'm going to go back to my knife collection back here. i got my knives hanging on a magnetic strip over that away. And I'm going to cut this into two, um, two evenly sized fillets. Not one larger than the other because, oh, that one's a little bit bigger. That one will be Sawyer's because I'm a nice freaking guy. Got a really good oh, yeah. skin at the end there. Yoshi oh, Gamer, I turned myself down a little bit. Thank you. Thank you, Yoshi Gamer. Thank you for, like, we, we are wide open for any uh, issues that need solving. Anything that's bugging you, we are all ears. So, and tell me what's going on in your lives. I'm all, I'm all ears to that, too. What's going on with y'all? Uh, Uncle Tay wants to know about that espresso maker back there. Ooh, Uncle Tang. What we have back here, you probably can't see it very well. It's a Breville uh, uh, something. It's a Breville. I think it was called the, the Barista Mini, I think it was, was the actual name of it. Um, it's served us very well so far. I'm not like, you know, I love espresso, I love coffee, but I'm not like a huge nerd about it. I wish I were. This is something you gotta look out for, guys. You might notice I'm pulling bones out of this. They don't always get all the bones at, the, at your local fishmonger, so you gotta be careful. Just, you, if you squeeze it like this, you can feel they're these little pointy guys, and you don't want to catch any of those when you're eating it because it is an unpleasant experience. It won't, it won't kill you, but it won't make you stronger, I don't think. And that sort of goes against conventional 
wisdom. All right, I'm not feeling anything else, so we're going to move on. Um, hang on, let me just wash my hands real quick, and then we're going to get to making some topping for this. Hey, Hunting Claw, congratulations, my man. Just get through that homework, graduate, watch a little bit, do what you can. We appreciate you. Man, thanks for watching. Get through the homework, all right? Thank you guys get for the tips. I see more tips just pile up in the tip jar. I appreciate it. Um, I know it's finals time for a lot of people across the nation, across the world right now, and my heart goes out to you. Um, you know, I'm going to get down. I'm going to get down right here, and I'm going to look you in the eye, and I'm going to tell you, keep studying, stay in school. Sometimes it helps, depending on your major. We'll see. But good luck. Good luck. Keep it up. Um, all right, so the next thing we need to do uh, for, the, for these salmon fillets is we need to toast some breadcrumbs. And for that, we need to uh, toast them in a, in a fry pan, which traditionally I would take out that induction cooktop that you guys know and love. i put it right here, and we'd see it right here. But I have a very special treat for, for all y'all first-time viewers, which is that uh, I'm just going to walk over here real quick, and we're going to see you know, what happens when I do that. Oh, my gosh. Would you look at that? I'm in a new place. We have gone multicam. <laughs> um, I was constantly watching the stream to make sure that it actually cut because that would have been really weird if I was making that commentary with no. <laughs> yeah, I'm also no not so thing. sure on the timing with the delay. So, uh, you know, if that looked really slick, you're welcome. <laughs> would I, but my, my audio should be like in line with uh, my actions, right? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. All right. So. What I'm going to do is, what do you think, folks? Show, show me the emotes if you like the new angle. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to grab some butter out the fridge here. I'll be right back. Don't, don't cut away just yet. And I got some panko breadcrumbs. I got some butter. Oh, you know something? We're going to have to cut back in a second here because I forgot. We need uh, thyme. We need fresh herbs. So. Got the butter in here. Let's head back to camera one, and we're going to chop up some fresh herbs. So, all right, so we're back, uh, back over here, hopefully. My man, uh, Jake over there, is, is doing a fabulous job directing and, and, and producing this, this show right now. We're kind of a two-man band here. Um, I'm just washing off the knife so I can cut herbs without poisoning it with raw fish. So, there we go. And I'm just going to get some time going here. Uh, you can use any number of herbs in your breadcrumb mixture. I'm really just going to go with uh, thyme and butter, and I think that's going to be plenty. So thyme, thyme is such a tricky little monster because, like, depending on what, on what kind of thyme you get, sometimes they're like all these, sometimes, sorry, uh, they're, they're like all these little branches and all this stuff, and, but sometimes they're these fabulous single branches that you can so easily just grip the top of it and whoop, easy as that. And you know, so when you're in the grocery store, try to be on the lookout for time. Sometimes they look like this, like this is one single stalk and this would just be a nightmare to peel the leaves off of because you know, how are you gonna do it? So, you know, I, I try to look for these ones that have lots of these, uh, these single stalks here. Ooh, we got some flowers in there, thyme flowers, that's pretty. We don't want to put those in our fish, though. No, sir. I mean, actually, I don't even know what kind of effect that would have, but I'm not going to, I'm not trying to experiment here. We're trying to learn the basics. We're, we're, you know, we're not, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel tonight. We're just trying to learn some easy techniques for fun, healthy weeknight meals. Uh, except for the fish fry, which is gloriously unhealthy because everything is deep fried. Uh, oh, look at all those flowers. Look at all the thyme flowers I got going here. I'm going to put some of those in there. Let's see what happens. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Poisoned? Is thyme turned to poison? So I Google that. <laughs> thyme turned poisonous when, the, when it flowers? I'm kidding. I know it doesn't, but... You can never be sure. You know, I once ate the leaves of a rhubarb plant and had to go to the hospital. Wow. That's something yeah. I wasn't aware of. I wasn't savvy yeah. to the fact that rhubarb apparently is always poisonous, so you should never eat rhubarb, is what I'm taking away from what you're saying. <laughs> that is um, the safest approach. That is the safe. If you want to make it through the day, you got to just not eat any rhubarb. You see it on menu? Just say no, kids, okay? All right. Yeah, but, That's but a, seriously, watch the leaves. They kill you. 
Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't. But in all seriousness, don't eat the leaves. Oh, this is a this is a bountiful time time uh, sprig right here. I'm gonna get lots of leaves off of that. Look at that. Oh, oh yeah. All right, that's enough time. I don't have time for this. More and more puns. Other time puns. I'm not out of time. I got plenty of time here. You know. Sorry. Uh, That's shout a... out to Giga Kilo for the callback. Time is poison to dogs. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you for watching the grilling episode two weeks ago out in Nashville, where we learned that everything is poison to dogs. So thank you very much. What did you say? It was Gigatron? Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Yeah, How you guys like in the new... Giga Kilo? I'm sorry. Um, no. How you guys like in the new kitchen? I'd love to hear y'all's opinions on the new spot. What do you think? What do you think of the way it looks like? You know, we, we built this, like we put up the, the pegboard behind us here. We, uh, you know, we, we, we tried to make this into the, the literal extension of the Babish uh, aura. <laughs> uh, I wanted this to be, you know, just sort of the, a, a, a literal manifestation of what the show's about. So let me know what you, what you guys think. Oh, so mods can start a poll. Let's get a poll going on the kitchen. I'm sure it's going to really break my heart. A lot of people are going to be like, it's dumb. It's ugly. The one complaint that I've heard is that like, it's too like, you know, teched out. It's too like, like there's too much going on and people think that I was using a small, you know, apartment kitchen because it made it a bit more accessible. And, and I, I totally get that. But that kitchen back in Harlem, as much as I loved it, it wasn't proper for shooting. It was in a railroad apartment. I had to move the camera every time I wanted to open the fridge. Kitchen's too blurry. I know. <laughs> yeah, this is a blur. This is a blurry kitchen. I apologize. All right. So Jake, let's move over to camera two because I'm going to start testing some breadcrumbs here. One really fun thing about this new kitchen is that uh, the only way to, uh oh, where's my torch? Uh oh, oh here it is. The only way to light the stove, there's no pilot light for the stove, there's no electric starter, so this is the only way to light the stove. Wow. And it's a, it's a, it's a jet engine, listen to that thing go. I don't know if you can hear it through my mic. I'll, I'll lean over it and catch on fire so you can hear it. <sighs> All right, we're gonna try to turn this down as low as it'll go. These guys burn hot, but we want nice low heat because we're just trying to melt this butter, we're just trying to get it foaming. Once the foam subsides, we're going to add our, our breadcrumbs. We definitely don't want to brown it. The brown butter is not really, you know, the ideal application for what, what we're doing here. We're just toasting some breadcrumbs, having a good time. Just t telling some, some, some funny bones and some uh, chuckle. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> anybody, anybody goof, goofballs and funny bones over here. Goofballs and funny goofballs bones. Goofballs and funny bones. Forget, forget about, about it. it. Forget, forget, about forget about it. it. Hey, forget about it. It was, the, it was the forget it buddies. Forget about forget it. Forget it buddies. Just doing some cooking. Not a big deal. Don't worry about it so much. <laughs> we're, we're not as good at that as, as, as John Glazer and, uh, and, and uh, John H. Benjamin are. Um, Check that out if you haven't. That's gold. Cool. Yeah, watch the forget it buddies and watch the whole thing because yeah, part, it's part a 10-minute lead you. up. Gotta it's get a 10 to the end. lead up to one joke, yeah. Ooh, that jar's looking full. That jar's looking full of your little heads. Ooh, look at empty that. out the jar. Let me look at that jar. Oh, Ooh, look at all full. that ice. No, they're falling out. Do I still get they're the tips? They're falling out. We gotta get them. Fall out? All right, clear them. Cleared it up. Cleared it up, thank you. What if I lose oh. tips because they can't fit? Bro got you knows. Forget it, buddies. Forget it, buddies. All right, maybe I can turn this up a little bit higher. I'm still getting used to the stove, folks, you know. We're hearing that the stove. audio is cutting out, Andrew, but I'm not seeing your mic bounce any differently, so I don't know what to tell you. We're hearing that my audio is cutting out? Yeah, you're cutting in and out. Are we talking uh, like straight cut zero to 100 or up and down with, uh, with a little bush? All right, audio is fine. No audio problems here. All right, all right. We're getting trolled. We're getting trolled. Keep it oh, going. Keep God. it going. No common, problem. Forget, common, about Forget about it. Forget about it. Co common audio trolling. That's, that's yeah. the lowest form of trolling. As, I want to hear as, it, okay? As old as time. <laughs> the tale as old as Twitch. Now, so as old as I, got the, 
I got the butter melting here and it's, I'm just gonna let it foam up a little bit. And then as soon as the foam goes away, that's when we're adding the breadcrumbs and we're just gonna toast them up a little bit. We're gonna add the thyme towards the end because we want to heat the, up those herbs, get rid of their vegetality, if that's the, a word, indeed a word. And just mellow out the flavors, get every, let everybody get to know each other and that's gonna be the perfect topping for our salmon, which we're going to adhere to the salmon using some mustard and uh, maybe some mayo. I gotta check the recipe, I cannot fully remember, but this looks like the perfect amount of butter for you know, enough breadcrumbs for two, two salmons. Um, so you can see that it's foaming up here, you can see some butter bubbles, and uh, as soon as it sort of like levels out, as soon as the, bu the bubbles are no longer clumping together, that's kind of what I'm looking for right there. It's not really foam, it's just bubbles, so I'm gonna drop these guys in. Just enough to cover them up and really make them feel well coated and loved. And now I forgot that I'm, I'm not cooking in a non-stick pan right now. So normally I would just flip them around because they wouldn't stick, but I have to exercise the use of an implement in my toasting of these breadcrumbs because this is a stainless steel pan. So stainless steel, not All that right, scary. I just checked the poll and we're at 93% smash and 7% pass. That sounds like a win to me. <laughs> whoever, whoever came up with those polling metrics, uh, you're, you're my new favorite uh, viewer. So thank you. Smash versus pass, that's great. Uh, I'm very happy that you guys would mostly uh, want to smash rather than pass. Uh, I'm very, very, very excited to hear that. Man, this stove is really powerful. It takes some getting used to. Got to keep things moving, but high heat, like, you know, that's where a lot of great cooking comes from. Now that I've loosened this from, there we go. See, now, now that I've gotten it unstuck from the bottom of the pan, I can really toss these around without, uh, with wild abandon. We're just trying to get some nice light browning on there because these guys are going to keep cooking a bit more in the, uh, in the oven when we roast the salmon. So we don't, we don't need them dark brown, we just want them li a light toast going on these guys, that's all. Woo, the smoke. Salmon. Salmon, they put salmon in the fish tacos, Hank. Anybody, any King of the anybody? Hill fans out there? I, I know you're out there. That's a great impression by the way, Andrew. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm gonna add that to the roster. Yeah, that should be on the roster. That's such a, an obscure one, though. It's it's. What's the name of that guy? Uh, um, I, um, it, it starts with oh, an E, I think. Yeah. Like you, is it? Uh, I don't want to say. I don't want to just like pull so, a, yeah, a so, Mexican name out of my ass. Somebody will say it. Somebody yeah. Somebody tell it. me. Salmon in the fish taco sack. Enrique, of course. Enrique. I knew it was an E name. I fucking knew it. Um, yeah, Enrique. <laughs> I apparently can do a flawless Enrique impression. So. Hooray. All right, so you can see, start to see some flecks of brown coming in here. These guys are starting to, to turn a nice, lovely tan. That's what we want. Maybe this is the point where I add this, the thyme, so I'm just gonna grab that real quick. Here we go, I can see the little thyme flowers in there. It's a lovely little kind of splash of color. And then I'm going to hit this because we want to season as many of the separate elements of a dish as possible. So even though we're gonna season the salmon on its own, we are gonna season these as well. Just a little bit of kosher salt, a little bit of freshly cracked peppers. Jake, I'm sorry, I wish you were in this room. You see, smell this right, right now. It smells like herby toast, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah, I'm in a sealed off room, but hey, that pepper grinder sounds great in the mic. Am I right, people? Oh, that's, <laughs> can you hear that? Well, let's start Ooh. a new poll. Does the pepper grinder sound great? In the I think there's some ASMR in that, yeah. Oh, uh, oh, Charisse Rose wanted to know what kind of salmon. So then my follow-up to that is there's different kinds of salmon? Yes, there are. Yes, so Sawyer. There, oh, man, I love this dynamic that we're building here. Um, it's good. It's like, we're, it's like we've known each other or something. <laughs> it's like we've known each other since we were 14. Yeah, yeah who could, uh, who could by say? The way, just for newcomers, Sawyer and I have known each other since we were 14. We've been friends since freshman in high school. Uh, and and we've, been, we've been dreaming of being media moguls our entire lives, and now this is our chance, so. so At the so, very so least, Frasier nice. and Roz, that's really what we want. That's, yeah, no, we're, really, we're, we're after a Frasier and Roz relationship, um, and I think we're, we're nailing that right now. But uh, yes, to answer your question, there are different kinds of salmon. There is farm salmon, there is wild-caught 
salmon, Alaskan, Scottish, like it can come from different regions. It can be wild or it can be farmed. Um, generally, I would go wild salmon. It's more expensive, but it's more flavorful. And they do, uh, farm salmon, sometimes they will, um, they will add artificial colors to the salmon to make it look pinker, which is just kind of gross. Like you'll see that like really electric pink salmon and that's usually farm salmon. And it is inexpensive and it is still healthy for you, but it's less flavorful. It's kind of like, you know, factory farm chickens. It's cheap, uh, they're big, they're juicy, but they're not as flavorful. They're not as, they're just not as good. So, you know, I hate advocating for the expensive, the fussy ingredients. Th this tossing looks dope with the high, with the high shutter speed. I'm gonna do a big toss. Look at that. Ooh, ow, whoa. <laughs> Almost lost some there. That, that looks sick. Just wait until it, until it happens. I'm gonna watch it on the stream so I can see it. Oh, wow. That was cool. All right. Um, okay. Look how lovely and golden brown these guys have gotten. I'm taking them off the heat. In fact, I'm not only gonna take them off the heat, I'm gonna take them out of the pan so they don't keep cooking because they are very toasty golden brown. I don't want them any golden browner than this because they have more cooking to do in the oven. So let's remove them entirely from the heat. All right, let's head back over to the prep table. We're gonna go back to camera one here and we got our salmon. Um, I'm kind of doing this from memory. I need to look at the recipe here because uh, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna mess this up. Um, all right. Uh, what did I do to, oh, mustard. Okay, so mustard acts as the glue to get our breadcrumbs onto the salmon. But uh, we also want to add some egg white to, um, to these breadcrumbs. That's gonna help them stay together and it's gonna, it's gonna act like a, like a glue to keep them from just, you know, if you've ever made salmon with, with breadcrumbs, it's a mess, it's a disaster. So as soon as these guys cool off enough to add an egg without cooking the egg, we're gonna, we're gonna toss these with, uh, with an egg white and uh, that's gonna make for a really, you know, sort of more cohesive topping for our salmon so we don't lose too much of that crunchy goodness. And it's not gonna soak up in the breadcrumbs. It's not gonna make them mushy. It's just gonna make them adhere a little bit better. Ah, um, oh, wow. So any, any uh, this is, I, lo I love this new setup, dude. Any, any good, um, Good, good questions from the audience here we want to field. Uh, well, Sharice wanted to tell me that the way you say your name is Karis, I guess. So there's that. Karis? Um, Karis? Yeah, K yeah I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But, right. um, sorry, sorry, yeah, Sharice. We're, we're seeing some uh, talk about different salmons. You know, it is true that the, the more expensive salmon is much more expensive. We, we did notice that. But yeah, it's nearly twice more. the price. I, I've seen it at twice the price where, you know, you, you'll be looking at uh, 11 bucks a pound for farm salmon. You'll be looking at $22 a pound for, for uh, um, the wild caught stuff. So yeah, big price gap, but you know, it always comes down to flavor. I don't think that I'm not going to advocate like, you know, you're a bad person if you get uh, farm salmon because you're not like it's, it's, it's good for you and, and it's a, a relatively sustainable um, uh, 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 live, livestock? What do you call fish? It's a relatively sustainable food to, to, to farm. Um, I don't think it's a livestock. No, it's, I, I felt weird referring to fish as livestock. I really felt uncomfortable, so I'm sorry for anybody who I've offended by saying that. I have a little drink from my tip jar here. Thank you. Oh, the tip jar is almost full again. Oh, good catch. Here we go. Boom. Cheers. Hmm. One pound of salmon costs one Bitcoin. What? Whoa. Maybe that in is 2010. High, high cost. <laughs> Maybe 2010. We got, we got, you've just awoken our resident uh, cryptocurrency freak here. Oh yeah, we'll talk that. about it. We'll talk I, about I, it. I, I, I own some Bitcoin though. I have some Bitcoin, some Ethereum. That's gonna wake up. That's gonna get some comments going. <laughs> but uh, cheers to, to cryptocurrency. Hmm. That's how I'm spending this money you guys are giving me with these tips. That's going straight into crypto. So thank you. <laughs> um, but let's see. Eight, what is H O D L, or is this another one? Of those that means ones? that means hold on for dear life. It's a uh, acronym for buying cryptocurrency and then trying your hardest to forget you did and just let it sit. 
until we live in a society where we're as close to our currency as humanly possible, we represent ourselves with our own money, and cryptocurrency is all we have. So that's what holds well, all exactly, about. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. So hang out for dear life, guys. Um, all right, so these guys are cooling off here. They're almost cool enough for me to add an egg white to. Let me grab a bowl so you guys can see what's going on there. There, I got a bowl right here. And let's toss these guys in there. And I'm gonna grab some eggs out the fridge. And we're gonna make ourselves some lovely, crunchy, juicy, healthy, relatively healthy, except for the fact that you're eating all these breadcrumbs and butter. Uh, hey, uh, the, uh, the casual businessman wants to know what's a good scotch for cooking salmon, and that's in my interest, so. Here we go. This is a Japanese, I think it's single malt, or no, it's the, the, the Nika pure malt I just got and I really am enjoying. This is a, a, this is a heavy smoker right here. This guy puts out some, some, this guy chucks some fat clouds with all the smoke he's puffing, but. Um, right now, currently, what I'm drinking is a bourbon called Angel's Envy. I really like it. Again, not sponsored. This has just been one of my favorites in its price point. It is pricier. You, you know, these guys will run you 45, 50 bucks, but it's a really solid Kentucky bourbon, and I really enjoy it. Um, I don't know what, what to pair with salmon, honestly. I don't know what, what bourbon goes with salmon. Does bourbon even go with salmon? I know this is a white wine fish, so if you're going to drink, you know, have some Sauvignon Blanc or have some... You know, something classy like that. All right, let me grab, I'm gonna preheat the oven over here, okay? So this oven's super scary. It's, it's a new oven, I've, I've, I've seldom used it, and it's super duper scary. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And the reason it's scary is not only because it's huge and like commercial, but also because um, it doesn't have a starter. It doesn't have a, um, just like the, the, the burners, it just has a constant, pilot light going and so when you turn it on you just hear the gas just turn on and it's it just makes me think that I'm just pumping gas into the room but it's just it's just widening it's it's eternal flame uh, that it's it constantly has burning this is almost completely cooled off so we're we're almost set here what I'm gonna do though is I'm going to prep the cookware that's gonna go on um, I have some that's my parchment paper where's my so, sorry, I got my aluminum over here around the corner. Let me grab it. Coming back, here we go. So, uh, this is some non-stick aluminum foil. Um, so, you don't really need to spray it down. Normally, I would recommend spraying this down with, with Pam because as I, as I so playfully jibed in, my, in the episode, these things will, will cling to... Um, to uh, aluminum foil the same way that your landlord will cling to your security deposit. It's really funny, I know, but it's also accurate. Um, they will uh, they will not let go. They will hang on, not let go. And this, I don't know how these are nonstick. They do feel a little kind of greasy on one side where it says it's the nonstick side. Um, I don't know exactly how that works, but I'm not, I'm not gonna question it. And I'm going to you know, sort of take it, even though I know it's non-stick, I'm gonna take a precaution. I'm gonna hit it with, whoa! I'm gonna hit it with a whole shit ton of vegetable oil, apparently. <laughs> um, uh, let me get some paper towels to mop that up. I just dumped a half a cup of vegetable oil on here. So let's get rid of some Fish. of that. Fish wants to know, could you cook it on a salt plank? You could cook salmon on a salt plank, and you know what? I, ha I have a salt plank <laughs> over the, over in the, uh, the, the, the I'm never going to use these things closet. Um, I, I, you totally could. I don't know why you would, because salt planks are cool because you can like heat them up super hot and then um, you know cook things directly on them like thin meats. You can sear them on there, and they'll they'll get Im imbued with that saltiness. But I don't know why you'd do salmon because it would just make the bottom of the salmon, the skin, salty, which personally I don't eat anyway, and most people don't eat unless it's in a sushi situation. Um, so I'm not entirely sure why you do that, but hey, this is a free country and it wouldn't hurt. I'm sure it would be fine. Um, so anyway, we are got these guys right here, and now I'm going to add an egg white to this joint. Grab my eggs. 
Oh, I have some caramelized onions left over from that, from Bubble Bass's burger. I wonder if there's anything fun I can do with those. Sawyer got to try the Bubble Bass burger. What do you think, Jake? I ate an embarrassing amount of that Bubble Bass burger, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> All right, so we are extracting egg whites. So carefully toss the uh, egg yolk back and forth between the two halves of your shell until you got all that delicious white extracted. If you break the yolk, get rid of that. Mustn't have any yolk in there. I'm sure it wouldn't hurt to have a little yolk in there, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not risking it, not today, not when all you guys are watching. Um, there we go. Grab the paper towel. Get that eggy egg off my hand. And I'm just gonna grab a fork and just give this guy a little stir. I've got my oven preheating to 325 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who are cooking along. Is anybody cooking along? We got any people saying like, hey, I'm making this right now. My name is Bob Simmons. I live in uh, Tallahassee, Florida, and I have 12 kids and I'm making this for all of them at once. And I don't know where I'm coming up with it. It's not like a stereotype, but I don't know where I'm come up, coming up with this character. But Bob Simmons is one of my best favorite viewers. Oh, I gotta bring the screen back up so I see all his comments. Sorry, there we go. Why oh, don't, don't say that. Um, <laughs> don't say that to me. Um, let's see, Robert Paul, Robert Paulson. That's a Fight Club reference, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so got these nice breadcrumbs going here. They just have a little bit of egg white in them. They're still a little crisp, but you know they've softened up a little bit. But they're going to crisp right back up as soon as the egg white cooks when we throw these guys back in the oven. It's totally combined. So now, to act as a little bit of glue and extra flavorant, first I'm going to hit these guys with the requisite a uh, little bit of kosher salt. Remember, season everything, season all layers of your dish. Um, if it's something you're cooking for a while, season it at the end, but we are cooking these and then immediately eating them after like, I believe the cook time is 12 minutes. I have to check the recipe, but it's not much. I know it looks like I'm putting a lot of salt on there, but I'm just doing little, little pinches. That way it's more forgiving, you know what I mean? Uh, and then oh, we yeah. have the lovely ground pepper noise. Yeah, you guys liking that? Ground pepper noise, uh, let me check the grinder. 96% like the pepper noise. Th they actually nice. made a poll? I knew they would. Yeah, gotta, pepper grinder, pepper grinder, hot or not, 55 votes, only two not, 53 for yes. So wow. grinder, is, that is grinder is in. Overwhelming. Um, all right, you know what? Let's do another poll. <laughs> this needs to be a quick one because I need an answer like in the next few minutes. Should we use... Uh, old style whole grain mustard, or should we use Dijon mustard? Whole grain Dijon. Whole grain Dijon. You shout tell me. out to our Spencer Gaming for setting up the last two. Yeah, um, our Spencer I'll, Gaming. Thank you very much. I'm seeing so a lot of Dijon I'm, in the comments. Oh, all right. Whole, whole looks like uh, the comments. I'm seeing a lot of whole grains. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of Dijons too. Oh, geez, this is why we need a poll. It looks split, man. I'm, I'm gonna go Dijon because it's gonna act as a better glue for, um, for the breadcrumbs. The, 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 the whole grain would still definitely work, but this is, you know, this is nice and smooth. It's just gonna, it's gonna spread on real good. So we're just gonna drop some of this guy in here. Make sure you're not touching the spoon to the salmon uh, and then putting it back in the jar, obviously. So don't do that. <laughs> So, you know, generously mustard it and then spread that mf -er around, you know what I mean? It's heavy, you know? There we go. Make sure it's got a nice even layer of mustard. I could just eat this the way it is. I love salmon, man. The thing is, you got to cook it like, for me, you got to cook it medium rare. I want a nice, you know, soft, sort of trans semi-translucent almost uh, pink center. And um, I know people are going to make some innuendos about that right now, so that'll be fun. Um, but that is the way I like it, and uh, it's so tender, it's so juicy when you do it that way. Um, Whoa! We got we on. got 
We got Edimir from BNH in the stream. Hey, what's up, dude? Thanks what's for helping up, us out dude? today. We got the we got the fellow from BNH who helped us purchase the streaming equipment today. He said that he would subscribe, and he wasn't lying. Thanks, man. He and his wife are uh, cooking salmon. Maybe not right now, but they're always looking for good recipes. So hopefully, uh, hope you enjoy this one. All right, well, to, to bring you back up to speed, because I know it's probably some people are, are just joining right now, um, what we have here are some salmon fillets that we've coated with some Dijon mustard, and we've got some uh, panko breadcrumbs that we've toasted with butter, salt, pepper, and freshly chopped thyme. And then once they cooled down, we added an egg whites, two egg whites, uh, depending on how many breadcrumbs you have. You want to just sort of just moisten them so they're, they're starting to clump together a little bit, but not totally you know, saturated. And that way they're gonna hold, hold together a little bit better. And now we're just gonna, you know, do this little thing right here. Where we're going to coat these guys down with a generous helping of breadcrumbs because really you're eating, sa I love salmon, but you're eating salmon for the breadcrumbs. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm eating the salmon because it's got this crunchy goodness on top here. I'm gonna do a side view for this next one so you can really see what's going on. You can see that there's a very healthy layer of, uh, of breadcrumbs on that guy. And this is gonna be me and Sawyer's dinner and we're just gonna have us a nice little time. There we go. I'm really stacking them on there. And you see like, yeah, I'm losing some, but they're really staying put because of the egg white. The egg white's holding them together just loosely. They're still, they're not, a, they're not mush. They're not like one whole thing, but they're, they're being kept together and that's, uh, you know, you got to stick together in this day and age. You know, things are so crazy right now. You got to stick together. We're, we're one people. We're one something. Here's uh, the, the salmon fillets, crusted in breadcrumbs. And now um, I'm going to put these in the oven. I don't know, Jake, if we want to do a camera switch because it's just literally me putting it in the oven. But let's do it. Why not? We're, we're experimenting. Here we go. Camera two. Welcome. <laughs> uh, so... I'm just going to throw these in the oven, then we're going to head right back over there. Um, I uh, hope that this is at the right temperature. I said 325, correct? So let me double check that. 325 Fahrenheit for 18 to 25 minutes. I'm going to shoot. These are not like the thickest. They're pretty thick, but they're not the thickest. Thick boys. They're not the thickest fillets in the world. And, um, and uh, sorry, I'm just adjusting my microphone. Uh, so. I don't want, the last thing I want in, in the entire world is for them to overco overcook. So I'm just gonna toss them in for, let's shoot for 15 minutes to start. And then I'm gonna take their temperature. Ooh, that's toasty. Uh, let me set a timer. I'm not gonna do the, um, the command on my phone because then all your phones are gonna go nuts, am I right? So you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna set a timer over here for 15 minutes and three seconds go there we go and then we're gonna check on the salmon after that let me clean this up a little bit so we can start moving on the fish and chips as fast as possible um, for those of you who might be wondering i know i would be wondering maybe you're not but i certainly would be uh, how i'm san how i'm cleaning this wooden cooktop when i just had fish on it what I have here is a very strong uh, vinegar solution. It's not pure white vinegar. You can go pure white vinegar if you want to truly sanitize. That will kill all the germs. But this is maybe like half and half, just so it's not too crazy stinky. And this is really going to take care of uh, most of the <laughs> bacteria that, that have ended up there. But, you know, wooden cutting boards have been a thing for much longer than all of you have been alive combined. So, you know, this might not be like, this might not get an A uh, via the New York, uh, or that's, that's a nationwide thing now. Um, the restaurant ratings, maybe you get a B, but vinegar really knocks out most, most pathogens. So you're, 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 you're pretty good. And we're putting more fish down there mostly. So not really much to worry about. All right, so while that's going, let's talk stuff because we have a solid 15 minutes to kill. I'm gonna get down here so y'all can see my beautiful face, my beautiful freckled head. 
and droopy eyes. Um, I can't I can't remember who asked, but somebody wanted to know what your death row last meal would be, and that's something I'm curious about as well. <laughs> you might be the one serving it to me, sir. <laughs> God um, willing, God willing, my friend. <laughs> um, my death row meal is probably going to be either a, just like a thick ass, thick, thick boys, thick ass nice steak, boys. like you know, yay thick, cooked, cooked medium rare, rare, like you know, almost mooing, um, with with steak outsides, or it's gonna be buff bourguignon. I love buff buff bourguignon so much. I know it's one of your favorites too, Sawyer. Um, oh yeah, it, it it's, it, it's something comforting and warm and meaty. Yeah, like me. That's what they. That's what people call me. Um, but uh, what are your guys' last de- death row meals? I want to hear them. What are your What are your death row meals? I want to hear the last one. Duck fat. I hope That's a good one. Fat. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of duck fat in there. Leaning away from the mic. Yes, I just leaned over, so presumably my face is further away from the mic than it would normally be. How's that? Better? <laughs> we're, we're, we, again, chicken tendies? Who said chicken tendies? Syn- synchrotron. I, I'm, I'm down with that. Headphones, this is uh, Bose uh, Sound Sport, and basically, so I can hear Sawyer. This is a little ratchet, but so I can hear Sawyer. I, we're doing a phone call right now. He's, he's on the phone, <laughs> and yeah. this is Bluetooth into my phone, and we're just having a phone conversation so I can hear what he's saying live, so it's not like delayed or whatever. I'm not listening to the stream. Um, hit, me, hit me with a whisper if you have a better idea. Yeah, hit us with a whisper, okay? I want to hear the whisper. Um, explain my freckles. No. Uh, <laughs> lobster, 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 and Buddha. Uh, Got to go to Texas for deep dish anchovies for last meal. I don't think they let you do that, uh, especially in Texas. They took away the death row meal in Texas. So if you, you're in death row, you better hope it's not in Texas. You're not going to get a last meal. I mean, you'll get a last meal, but it's not going to be what you want. I see Defara's pizza. Fabulous. Um, let's see. Discord, I say Discord is the way to go. Weird last meal choice, but I'll take it. Um, Papusa with salsa. Pizza rolls. What was your favorite video game console as a kid? I was an, I was a Nintendo boy uh, all the way through PlayStation 2. So I grew up with NES, Super NES, N64, and then I switched to PlayStation 2 after that. And I've been a PlayStation guy ever since. But I do have a Switch. Um, Fettuccine Alfredo with watermelon for dessert. That's an interesting combo. It sounds like something that I would hear a serial killer ordered for his last meal. Uh, I love my pizza and nachos video. I never did a nachos video that, is, that I'm aware of, but thank you. <laughs> um, let's see. Discord instead of phone call. Uh, Jake, are you asking about calling? Why are people talking about Discord and phone calls? Uh, because we asked them if there was a better way for us to communicate than a phone call. Oh, and people are telling yeah. us to use Discord, which I, I guess is cool. I mean, yeah, that's fine, but uh, we'd still have to do the earpiece rigmarole. Yeah. You know, there's, no, there's no way around that. There's always going to be an earpiece, unfortunately. If we're going to talk yeah, to each other, yeah. there's always going to be an earpiece. Um, but yeah. we also want to introduce a call-in, make this like Frasier, we want to introduce a call-in element to the show. And we're thinking that that might be available to like Patreon supporters or something like you get the number if you support on Patreon or something like that. Um, but we want to, that's going to be, expect that in future episodes for your, you to be able to call in and talk to me live on the air. And uh, that should be fun. And we're trying, it's slowly turning into uh, Frasier. That's really what's happening. That's been the plan that's, all along. It's the truth. It's been what we've been trying to do since the beginning. That is the intention of the show, is to eventually become Frasier 2, uh, um, Frederick Goes to College. So, how are we doing on time here? How are we doing on time? Nine minutes. So in that time, what can we get up to? Nothing really, because I, wa- I want to do the, uh, the fish and chips all at once. I guess what I can tell you about is the way I'm doing the chips. Uh, in the video, I, did, I started them off in cold oil and slowly brought it up to temp. And that worked. It created really nice crispy french fries, but they stuck to the bottom. It was a little problematic. Um, so I'm returning to my, my favorite method, which is to par fry the chips, the, the fries, for those of you who are Americans. Um, uh, par fry them for about 10 minutes until they just start to turn 
blonde, just a little bit golden, and then freeze them fully for at least four hours. I've only got two hours under my belt here because I had to get ready for the stream. You wanna go at least four hours because that's gonna let the internal structure of the potato crystallize, and it's going to then completely, almost, I don't wanna say dissolve, but it's gonna become really soft and tender when you fry them again. So you take them out of the freezer, fry them again. That's why fast food fries and fries from restaurants are so good because they order them frozen. And this, is, this same process happens. The, it, it, they get par fried, frozen, shipped, and then refried. And that's why they're so gosh darn crispy on the outside and soft and ethereal on the inside. What do we got here? Call ins. I read the comments on the video. Yeah, I think, I think uh, we'll definitely look into doing the private Patreon Discord. I think that's a good idea. That's uh, a, a couple yeah, questions yeah. for you, Andrew. Let's, uh, hit, let's hear them. What, what would be your favorite Christmas dish? My favorite Christmas dish? Um, I mean, when I think Christmas, I unfortunately think Thanksgiving foods. I think that's kind of the standard. Like, you just make Thanksgiving again for Christmas. Or, or Christmas ham, I guess. Um, hmm, Christmas foods. I, I love, uh, you know, I love the Christmas ham. I love a Christmas turkey. And, and um, hmm, that's a tricky question. I can't think of Christmas foods. What's, what's happening in my brain? Get some whiskey. Um, what, are you, what are your favorite Christmas foods, Jake? Yeah, that's a good question. I love Christmas. Um, I really love Christmas smells. You know, so yeah, I'm exactly. trying to think. Christmas like, is a I smell. I love the piney Christmas smell. So then maybe like a um, spiced, warm Christmas rum. Is that a thing? That's a thing. Uh, yeah, spiced rum, uh, buttered rum. Marty's favorite and in, in Marty's Ski favorite. Episode. That's it. Yep. <sighs> That's it. Buttered rum. Uh, buttered rum. I mean, th there are times, I don't know if you've ever had this, but there are times when you bite into something and you're like, or you drink something, you take a drink of something, and you're like, wow, that tastes like Christmas. <laughs> and you I can't really put feeling. your finger on it. It's like a certain mix of spices and, and, and vibes. And, uh, and, uh, it, Whatever that is, that's my favorite. That's those things that you, you taste it and you're like, wow, that tastes like Christmas. I guess eggnog, I love eggnog. Doesn't love me. What, what other questions we got going here? Well, people wanted to know about your favorite old video games. Um, my favorite old video just games. FaceTimed me. <laughs> um, oh, that was me, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was an accident. Um, I would never try to FaceTime you in the middle of, uh, <laughs> of the stream. That was very unprofessional, I'm sorry. Um, oh, and, my and art, go, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so my favorite video games back when I was a kid um, were, when I was on the N64, it was Zelda. It was, it was um, what was the name of that flying game we were just talking about? Oh, um, Pilot Wing 64, baby. Pilot Wing 64, Blast Corps, uh, Blast Corps, whatever it's called. Um, uh, when, on, on, on Super NES, it was uh, Mega Man X was like my favorite. Um, uh, you know, the it was Donkey Kong Country was on SNES, I think. Um, and then nowadays, Fortnite, love Fortnite. No, I'm kidding. I don't actually. <laughs> um, it's confusing. I don't, want, I don't want to build stuff while I fight people. It's hard. It's um, too hard for old I'm, guys like us. Yeah, we're old people. We're 30. Uh, yeah. I've been playing a lot of God of War. Uh, the new God of War, which I absolutely love. I love the combat system in that, and I love how the whole thing is one shot, and the voice acting is really great. And it's it's a fab. I love that game. I love God of War. Um, Mega Man X. I see some Mega Man X fans out there. Thank you for being who you are. Um, how are we doing on time here? I think we only got a couple minutes left. Don't FaceTime Sawyer. That's what we're trying not to do. Oh, my phone's freaking out. I can't handle all the stimulation. Four minutes. I have to be ready to take this guy's temperature. Normally, I have my Thermapen, my trusty, you know, red instant read thermometer, but it's packed away. Half of my kitchen is still in boxes. So um, I'm going to have to use some knockoff joint, uh, unfortunately. But we're going to do our best to take our salmon's temperature. I'm aiming for 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's you know that's that's like medium rare salmon. It's the same as the same as beef, really. Just shoot for that. It'll come up five more degrees while it's resting, and then we're gonna we're gonna eat it. And maybe uh, when it's out, Sawyer, if you want some salmon, we'll have you come out here, and they can meet you face to face. Uh, oh yeah. Because 
because I'd love for, I'd love for them to, to, to know you. Absolutely. And W. Buck, just to answer your sports question, I'll be fielding most of those. We're Buffalo Bills fans. Yes, we are. But we will not be discussing sports in this, in this uh, arena. I'm sorry. Um, no. <laughs> that was good. Um, we can discuss whatever we want when the sand is in the oven, okay? This is a safe space. Um, what, would, you, would I do hot ones if they asked me to be on it? Hell yeah. Guys, flood hot ones with requests, with comments saying, get Babish on there, please. I just hung out with Sean Evans yesterday. He was just here. We were just shooting a crossover episode because I was just on Sean in the Wild. So he's going to appear in next week's episode, which is, I'll leak it to you now. It's an Arrested Development special. So hot ham water. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let you guess what the Babish version of hot ham water is going to be. Let's see if you can guess what that is. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll make it easy for you. It's not split pea soup or some kind of ham soup. It's something else. Um, uh, corn balls, corn baller, and, um, and uh, frozen bananas, of course. Bluth frozen bananas. Um, I was going to do the skip scramble, but it looks really, really hard. And I don't want to. So next time, Arrested Development Part Two. Yeah, we're leaking today. Um, ham gravy. That's a good guess. Background noise is gone. Apparently, my sleeves are uneven. I'm sorry. No, it, it, they're not uneven. They're just kind of. See, there we go. All better. See, I just pulled one down by accident. Look at the symmetry. Look at the disgusting, beautiful symmetry that I am right now. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. We should be almost up on time here. We've been streaming for an hour, man. That's pretty good. Minute and 30 seconds. And then we are going to take our salmon temp temperature and see what's going on. Then, you know what we should have done while we were waiting? We should have made tartar sauce. That's what we should have done because uh, we need to make tartar sauce for our fish and chips. And it would probably go pretty good with this as well. Um, tartar sauce is a very simple, simple sauce. It's just mayo and and some herbs and pickles, and I'm just going to use relish in this case, and, uh, and a, a couple of basic spices. It's, 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 it's very simple, lovely. Mm. Oh, I love this stuff. For those of you just joining, it's Angel's Envy. Dude, I'm stunned by the numbers here. They told us we were getting on the front page. Are, can you check on the front page and see if we're there? Yeah, if anybody could let us know how they found us, that would be great. Yeah, because last time we did this, we had in excess of 15,000 viewers. And now, I mean, maybe it's because it's fish versus grilling. Grilling is so much more seductive as a, as a subject matter. Um, but what are you gonna do? That's cool, I'm very happy to cook for you guys. I'm not complaining. Thanks for, thanks for coming out and coming, coming and hanging out. Came from the front page. Yeah, got that badless alert, daddy, babby. Grilling is sexy, you're absolutely right. Especially that Traeger. I'm not sponsored anymore. I was doing a sponsorship then, and I'm saying this of my own free will. Traegers are dope. That thing was fun. You just set it to a temperature, and it goes. It just pumps it full of smoke. Oh, there's my timer going off in my ear. Oh, no. I just, I just ended the call with Sawyer. Disaster. I'm going to call him back. <laughs> there we go. Sawyer, pick up. It's me. <laughs> Sorry, pick up. <laughs> we're in the middle of the stream. There he is. Oh, All right, God. we're back, we're back, right. we're back. All right, timer's up, so that means fish is coming out of the oven. Jake, let's go over to camera two. Oh! Sorry to catch you off guard there. I know, I know that was a little bit of a, of no a problem, fandango. But I am gonna run over and close the window so they don't hear the busy streets of New York City. That seems, that seems wise. These don't look nearly done, so I'm actually gonna give them more time. I'm also wondering if this oven's hot enough. I mean, you know, I'm just getting used to this oven for the first time, folks. It's hard to uh, decide, um, you know, how it behaves. All ovens behave differently. They're not super duper accurate. And the, the fish just, it doesn't look cooked. It looks totally raw inside. So, and I, you know, I was checking early anyway. So this is just going to be towards the higher end. We have time now. We probably have at least five minutes. I'm going to set five minutes on the timer and we're going to make, um, tartar sauce in that time. Let's do it. Go back to camera one. As soon as you get back from uh, the window. Oh, I got you, boy. All right. I shouldn't set timers because I apparently can't stop them without hanging up on you. 
Yeah, so I can set a timer. Just, all right, set a timer for five minutes for me, would you? Not a problem. Hey, Sawyer, set, time, set a timer for five minutes. I don't like the sound it's, of that. <laughs> hey, Sawyer, call Sawyer. Hey, Sawyer. All right, so I got some parsley here. That's going to be nice. I have a lemon. All right, got my parsley, got my lemon. What else goes in tartar sauce? Tell me, recipe. Um, all right, we need mayonnaise. We need relish. Where's my mayo? Mayo's in, in this fridge, I think. Ah, right, here we go. Got the mayo. Ooh, squeak. All right, we got mayonnaise. We got uh, lemon. We got our relish. We've got some salt and pepper. Uh, we can add a little bit of grated onion. I have this um, microplane right here that I think I'm going to try grating the onion through. You know, it doesn't hurt to add more flavor. Like the, 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 these are the basic ingredients that you need to make tartar sauce right here. But you know, throw a little extra in there. Um, a little sugar is also nice in, in tartar sauce. So let me grab, um, I don't know where the sugar is. We, you know, again, just moved here, getting used to it. And I don't hey, know where uh, the sugar is. So we're gonna forego the sugar. Commenters, I'm relying on you to tell me when that jar is full and it looks pretty full to me. So next time, just let me know so I can empty it. Okay, thank you. Do you hear that commenters? Thank you. Sorry. Keep an eye on that jar. Um, keep an eye on the jar. Eyes on the jar. All right, I'm just grabbing some of this. This isn't washed, so make sure you always wash your, your herbs like these. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little rinse. Just a little rinse, just to make sure there's no dirt or, you know, contaminations. Um, and then, you know, parsley doesn't really bruise that much. Basil bruises if you do this, but parsley doesn't really. So you can sort of take it in a paper towel like this and then just wrap it up and like squeeze it. I'm just squeezing it all my might right now. And when I unwrap it, boom, relatively dry parsley. <laughs> dry enough parsley, that's, that's really what I'm after. So let's, let me get a bowl going here so I can, uh, where's my bowls? Here we go, a little bowl for the tartar sauce. I'm gonna give this guy a little choppy chop. Also, tartar sauce um, only gets better with not a lot of time, but like if you make this the day before, it's going to taste better the next day because everything's going to have sort of gotten to know each other and mellowed out and mingled. And you know, it's nice to let your flavors get to know each other. Uh, I just wanted to say um, that I was just trying to be formal in calling you the commenters, and I apologize. I'll, I'll call you the chat Jeez. if that's what you prefer. Swear, did you fuck this up? I don't think so. I think people recognize that um, it wasn't malicious. You know, we're just <laughs> just trying to have a combo here. But oh, if it's God. the chat, it's the chat. You know, that's it. How are our numbers doing? Did you slash our numbers? Oh, we lost like 400 people. They're gone. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, anyway, still fun. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab a spoon here so I can spoon some mayo while Sawyer uh, makes good on his on his apology f uh, for calling you guys commenters. We we apologize. That was a yeah. And uh, gaff. a little a little earlier, I just referred to the the chat as the chat, and it's actually just chat. So oh, that's what we're gonna go with. Sawyer, can you you're, you're really fucking this up right now? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah that, that's that's episode one of the new era. We're we're learning oh, our way. Geez. No, I'm kidding. Sawyer's really been making this happen. He has way more. Um, knowledge about streaming than I do, and he's 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 the one who put together you know put together all the the bits and the, and the um, the tip jar and 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 the, the the new fun stuff that we've got going in the stream. So while we might not know, ooh, pickle jars like you know uh, uh, stereotypes are true about pickle jars like ooh wow. Let's get this guy open. We're we're on live TV, Andy. Here we go. There it is. Y'all thought it was y'all thought it was slacking on the job. Not today. Okay, so uh, with tartar sauce, generally you can go like 50-50 ratio, uh, chopped pickles or sweet relish to mayo. 
That seems about right, you know. Take a look, you know, we're looking at like, well, maybe a little bit more mayo than pickles, but it's, it, it, when it comes to sauces, it's gonna come down to your personal taste. So measure all you want to sort of like learn a baseline and then learn what you like, you know. I'm gonna add some parsley here. You could add dill. Dill would be a great addition to tartar sauce. I don't have any dill on me. Um, oh, but I, you hear I, that? I highly recommend it. No, what's up? Your uh, five minutes are up. Oh, I didn't hear the timer. Thank you for the five minute warning. Let me, let's go over to camera two. Let's check it out. All right, we're over at camera two, I assume. And we're looking at the salmon. Okay, and that's what I wanna see. So the salmon is starting to turn a lighter pink. Oh, it's really blown out from all the light, I'm sorry. Uh, there we go. It's turning a lighter pink than it was when it was totally raw. I'm still thinking these aren't done, but I'm going to take their temperature anyway because I wanna see what's going on in here, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna insert this probe into the, the very thickest part of the salmon. And I'm getting right now a temperature reading of this is, see, this is not like my normal thermopen. This is just some, you know, oven thermometer, nothing fun. Right now I'm getting a reading of about 100 degrees, so we are not done yet. This oven, I think, runs a little cold. So we're gonna put this, how about, uh, uh, if you could set another timer for me for another five minutes, that'd be great, man. Oh yeah. That feels like 325, though. That feels more like 325. I love that I can identify that. All right, we're back at camera one. And here at camera one, we're making tartar sauce. I've got a lemon here that I'm going to, I'm, I'm gonna start with, with the squeeze of half of the lemon. Because, you know, you don't wanna go crazy with the lemon and tartar sauce. I mean, you can, again, this is all comes down to your preference, so. I am just going to start with half a lemon and then I'm going to taste it. And if it needs more lemon, I'm going to add more lemon. That's how this works. Ooh, thank you, Lego Maniac. Thank you. What Habain. happened? Thank you. The jar is full. Empty. Jar is full. Thank you, Megalomaniac. And thank you, all of all you guys who are filling the jar. I really appreciate it. It's very, very kind. And uh, let's grate us some onion, shall we? I don't know why I've never done this. I've always wanted to. So, got myself a yellow onion here. Taking the outermost layer off, just so we don't have any tough, gnarly stuff going into our sweet, sweet tartar. And uh, I'm just gonna use this, uh, th this isn't like a traditional microplane grater. It's got like these wide holes in it. I think that's gonna be great for the onion, so we still get some little hunks of onion. Um, that's great it up pretty fine. It's perfect though. Yeah, the, the, these aren't like annihilated. They're they're um, they're nice little pieces. You can see little chunks of onion, and that's going to be great. It's going to keep adding to the texture. That's one of the best things about tartar sauce is the texture of it. And I'm I just going to grate have uh, some competition for the pepper grinder. What what's the competition for the pepper grinder? Onion grinder. Onion grinder. Oh, this is good sound. Yeah. Let me get in there. Yeah, get in there. Oh, you like that, don't you? I'm gonna grate my finger off doing, doing this. <laughs> oh, oh, can you feel how satisfying, or can you hear how satisfying this feels? <laughs> oh, man, wow. All right. <laughs> enough, enough, enough horseplay. Um, that looks like plenty of onion. Don't want to over onion it either, but that's going to add a lot of nice flavor and a little bit of texture too. No complaints. And I'm definitely going way too deep into the complexities of a tartar sauce, but that's because my uh, fish is still in the oven. So we're also going to see, ooh, we're also going to season this guy with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Let's get that pepper grinder. Action going, and get right near the mic. Oh, uh oh, <laughs> running low on peppercorns. Uh -oh. oh, wow, that's the last of the peppercorns. Hope you guys don't want any more pepper in anything ever, because I'm done. 
now and forever. I feel like I'm on, I'm doing uh, t uh, uh, Tim's kitchen tips right now because I'm just making tartar sauce. Like he w he was just making like you know even simpler stuff like uh, like um, French uh, French r or Russian dressing and he was putting Pissman's mustard into it, but. It does feel silly that I'm putting this much effort and in talking into making tartar sauce, but this looks like perfect tartar sauce. Like this is exactly, exactly what I want. And I'm sorry, it's a little blown out because of all the light. Let me put it over here. There you go. You can see a little better over here. Perfect for dipping. Perfect for fish. And this stuff's only gonna get better with time. So go ahead and make it ahead of time. And I'm gonna taste a little bit. Again, we were, we were, we were testing out for lemoniness. Mm, no, it's perfect. That is perfect. So, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna put it in the fridge. We plastic wrap it. Oh, my mic keeps falling down. This is really annoying. Or, you know, the, 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 the earpiece, because this is just uh, headphones and the other half of it is going down my shirt and it keeps falling down. You gotta come up with a solution for this. All right, get the cling wrap. And then this guy's going in the fridge until we are ready for it. Which should be soon. How are we doing on that timer, Jake? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Did you set a timer? 15 seconds remaining. Ooh, nailed it. All right. Let me get my harder sauce in the fridge. There we go. And let's check on our salmon. Let's go to camera two. We're over at camera two now. Mm -hmm. And I'm grabbing the salmon out of the oven, Hank. And I'm gonna take its temperature. This time I'm gonna do the other, other filet so we make sure that we're... See, the, the, the breadcrumbs have become like super crisp. Like they become this crust on the outside of the salmon. It's beautiful. All right, I'm registering temperatures upwards of, uh, oh, geez. We're, I don't think we're there just yet. 100 and, 110. Looks like we got to go a little bit longer, folks. Even though this uh, thermometer is infuriatingly slow. Yeah, 110 is, is where we're at right now. So let's put it back in. Give me another five minutes, bruh. I think this oven runs really cold, so I'm gonna turn it up a little bit higher. Ah, I do like my salmon really medium rare, but not that medium rare. So, away that goes. And uh, this onion I'm gonna save for a future use, probably in breakfast tomorrow. What kind of breakfast foods would you guys like to see me make? I've, made, I've done eggs episodes before. Tell me your favorite breakfast foods and why I should make them. I've always, I've always wanted to make bacon from scratch. You guys want to see that? It's not really a basic though. It's not something most people do. Lego Maniac again. Thank you. The jar. Lego Maniac, thank you. Bacon, pancakes. Good bacon, work. How about bacon pancakes? Uh, Nations, thank you very much for subscribing. Twitch Prime, appreciate it. Hash browns, good thinking. Japanese omelet, not a huge fan personally, just because the, 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 I, th I feel like they're more visual than, than um, functional. <laughs> I feel like they just look cool and they're not as, as, as tasty, but that, that's, just, that's just my experience with them. Maybe there are better ones out there. I'm sure there are. I'm dying to go to Japan, so when I do, I'll check that out. Monte Cristo sandwich, hell yeah. Um, may, many jump baser, thank you very much. Many jump baser, thank you for subscribing. Appreciate it. Rack of lamb, thank you for the the, the bits. Uh, giga giga kilo, thank you for. Uh, you're the one who's doing your final exams. Giga kilo, I think. Thank you. Um, let's see. Do I know any other languages than English? I can speak. Um, I can speak the same amount of Spanish as a very self-centered toddler. Like, I really can only talk about myself. And you, you, if you start talking, I don't know what you're talking about. So, yeah, a little bit, <laughs> but that's about it. That's, that was far and away my worst subject in school was foreign language comprehension. I was terrible at it and I continue to be. 
but I do speak a little tiny bit of Spanish. Um, hola. Sí. Yo necesito tres burritos para mí y mis amigas. Sí o no? <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Scottish fry up. Pray tell, what is a Scottish fry up? It sounds like a, one of those big Scottish or one of those big European breakfasts with the sausage and the eggs and the beans and the, you know, the whole works. Blood sausage, all that. Get my shirt all situated here. I'm getting a little wrinkly from bending over so much. That sounded wrong. I need three burritos for me and my friends, correct? Uh, crunch wrap breakfast, I'm down. Food, I've done food from Adventure Time. I did Jake's Perfect Sandwich, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. Tell me, what do you guys want to see from, from Adventure Time? You want to see the Mississippi Queen? What else is there? I don't want to do the uh, everything burrito because, or Jake's burrito, because he, all he does is just throw everything in the fridge in there. That's not, that's not legit. Um, I've made bacon pancakes. It's up on the channel. Check it out. Let's see. Breakfast burrito. That's one of my favorite things. Thank you for the bits, Agent Hero. Um, one of my favorite things in the world is to like prep, you know, buy 50 tortillas, fry up, you know, two dozen eggs, fry up a pound of bacon, fry up a pound of sausage, cheese, and then just assemble, make an, get an assembly line going and freeze all those things and then you get just a ton of microwave burritos. It's amazing. Mississippi Queen, thin cakes, homemade bacon. I'm down, man. Um, Jake, let's try taking our first break because your boy has to blow his nose and last time wasn't very well received and I'd love to go blow my nose and I don't want to do it in your ears. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. You're going to see a graphic come up says we'll be right back and then we will literally be right back. Folks, I'm reading 125. That is perfect. Look at that. 125 Fahrenheit inter. Oh, oh, oh. We're, we're getting our intercom back up and running. There we go. All right, we're back. Are we back up and, and live, Jake? Oh, shoot. Hang on. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. All right, can, are we back up and live? Uh, yeah, you, they're saying your mic sounds a little low, but that could be because I just deafed everybody with that dang song. Yeah, everybody very, just Very around. sorry about that. Yeah, well, guys, there's a learning curve here. We're, we're new at this, and, and uh, we, we're, 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 we're just going to have some fun. Um, we, we have these standing like... sitting desks, and I was sitting before, but now I'm going to stand, so... Things All are right. going to change around here. Serious business. Here we go. Now it's business time. Here we go. Oh, man. I'm still getting 115 on one of these. This guy's good to go, but this one's still 115. Whatever. Can't you eat fish raw? Sushi. That's, that's what I hear. Uh, 
Uh, all right, you know what? Just so, for the sake of, uh, so we can get going here. Let me, let me, hang on, let me take it one more time. Yeah, I mean, this is gonna be very medium rare. That's the way I like it, so guess what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it. Um, okay, let me put the temp probe over here. I'm gonna plate these guys up. Let's uh, bring it back over to camera one in five, four, three, two, one, and cut. There we go. Hopefully that was perfect. Um, so, all right, let me kill the oven because uh, we're done with the oven for now. They're saying and your mic is still low. All right, I'm turning it up. All right, don't yell at us go. if it's loud, please. All right, I need a spatula. Ooh, okay, here we go, I got a spatula. Jar I got a fish full. spatula Thank in the list. Thank you, Miss Waggy. Thank you, Miss Wuggy. All right, these are just barely gonna fit in here. That's not gonna work. All right, Jake, you and I are gonna share a plate. I hope you don't mind. Okay, that's good, that's fine. We got a lot more coming. Yep, we do. And all that means is extra fries for me, please. That's not what that means. Extra fries. No, you misunderstand. <laughs> um, all right, so as you can see, normally, you know, salmon sticks to the to, to, to the aluminum foil like, like, a, like a bad joke. Um, but it's just coming right off, no problems, no complaining. It's just like, yes, take me, I am done. So that's coming right off, no problems, no muss, no fuss. That just came out of an oven and I just grabbed it with my hands. So that just happened. And what we're gonna do is grab our oven gloves so we can move this. Um, I think that oven runs really cold. I think I need to have this looked at because it was like at 375 and I feel like it was still barely cooking this. Um, some forks here and then Jake, uh, when you're ready, you're welcome to join me. All right, great. I'm coming over right now. So you guys are going to meet uh, Sawyer Jacobs who uh, has been around for many streams. He's one of the original Thick Boys and here he is. Hey! All right, all right. Oh, wow. oh, oh, okay, I'm getting... Wait. I can't speak, I can't speak. Okay, all right, yeah. earpiece is coming out, okay. <laughs> all right, earpiece is gone. I'm speaking to my first, chest if you're gonna time. talk. All right. I was getting crazy feedback there. All right, so here's a fork. This one's a little bit more done, this one's a little bit less done. And if you want it more done, just eat towards the front, but this one should be perfectly cooked. In fact, why don't we do a cross-section? Let's do a cross-section for God's sake. That's what, that's what we do on this show, we do cross-sections, so. Let's just cut right in there. Let's hope it's not totally raw. Oh no, it's part. That's just the way Daddy likes it. Yes. Can we see that? Let's take a look. Oh, it's yeah. just like perfectly soft and pink on the inside. It's not all dry and tough and light colored. It is perfect. That's just so the way. Should we go from the center of this yeah, guy? Yeah, I'm gonna grip some of this right here. Mmm. 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 Tastes like way tender. Mm. Um, let's have it some tartar sauce. I bet that's gonna be good. Tartar sauce, hard pressed to think of a fish that tartar sauce doesn't go with. What are they saying over there? I'm just trying to think of a fish that doesn't, maybe like a squid or like an octopus. A That's very true. Octopus. That'd probably not go very well with boiled octopus. I didn't think of that, thank you. All right, All right I'm gonna try gripping a little of this. I'm a little challenged here <laughs> with spatial. Mm. That's the way you do it. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm. That's way good. I'm into that. That's great. Great combo. But, all right. Even on the phone, in the back, you know what? Here we go. Mm-hmm. 
what y'all think of that? A little bit of lemon. All right. All right, I'm taking one more bite and then I'm going back to Ross's food. All right, all right, dude. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Mm. Let's my fork over here. Do you want do you want any of this to bring with you? You want to snack on it in there? Or you want to wait for the fish and chips? Keep it off camera so I can sneak back. All right, okay. <laughs> I'll get my head my headpiece in when you go back in the other room. Headpiece, earpiece. Mmm. Hope you guys will forgive me for eating this, but I'm hungry. Mmm. Mmm mmm mmm. I mean, these guys are asking for a close-up shot. I can try and no, this is a fixed cinema lens, guys. I'm sorry, and I can't reach. I can't. It's too far away. I can't reach the focus ring, so I can't. I can't do a close-up shot. I'm sorry. Um, but just know that it's friggin' perfect. Mm. 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 Oh. Are the is the chewing good ASMR? favorite. Not your favorite. No, I'm not a chewing ASMR guy. I'm this a is a very specific kind of a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not into that mukbang stuff. Mukbang ASMR is very niche. Yeah, that's not me. <laughs> I'm not a weirdo. Yeah, All sorry. Right. That salmon is off to the side where it can be snacked upon by your man, Sawyer Jacobs, um, if he so desires. And myself, honestly, because it's really good and I'm very hungry. I don't know why I'm so hungry. We had a big lunch. It was a while ago. It was a while ago. I shouldn't be so down on myself. <laughs> mm, okay. Sorry, last bite. Okay. Mm. All right, guys. Let's make some fish and chips. Yeah? Now, this is going to get a little complicated because this involves deep frying two things at once. And, um, you know, I normally, like in the episode, I did both of them in the same deep fryer and I kept the chips in the oven, keep them warm while I was frying the fish. But no matter how lovingly and care careful you do this, the, the chips are always going to come out worse after hanging out in the oven for, you know, 20 minutes or whatever. So I'm going to attempt to use both the deep fryer and a Dutch oven on the, uh, on the stovetop to fry these simultaneously. It's going to make Sawyer's job a little bit more difficult because he's, he's going to have to cut back and forth as I check these two things. But, um, and I should have warned him beforehand that I was doing this. <laughs> he's, he's, he's at the standing desk and he's standing. Mm. Okay. Tartar sauce going back in the fridge. Yay. Oh. Salmon, my neck. One more bite. Sorry. Just talking salmon. Mmm. <laughs> and see, like, the topping didn't disintegrate and go everywhere. It, most of it went inside of me because um, that's where it belongs. And uh, the egg white just keeps, just ties the whole room together, you know what I mean? Mm, okay. All right, so to do this, I need a deep fryer set up here and I need, mm, first we need to make our batter. We need to make the, uh, the batter for the fish fry. So first one I'm gonna do, is I'm going to harvest this, uh, this, uh, this, this baking sheet right here by just discarding that. Boom. This is going to be perfect for me to dredge my fish and flour before I put it in the hot oil. Um, oh, let me get the stuff going for the dredge and for the beer batter.
So what we need is a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. It's okay to, you know, normally I, I, I've been advocating doing stuff by weight. No, mostly that's with baking. With this, you know, we're going for a consistency. We're looking for like a pancake batter type consistency. So it's, you know, yes, you should measure by weight whenever you can, but this is a simple enough thing where you should be able to just sort of wing it and it'll be fine. Here we go, here's my flour. And I'm, gonna sp I'm especially going to wing it because I don't know where my measuring cups are because again, I'm only half unpacked here and um, they're in a box somewhere. So I'm just gonna sort of eyeball a cup, or no, a cup and a half rather, right? Yeah, a cup and a half. About a cup and a half of flour. That looks, looks about right. Again, we can really be, you know, kind of kind of loosey-goosey with this. And then half a cup of cornstarch, which I think that's really all I have here. That looks like about a ha uh, half a cup right there. Yeah, that looks perfect. About a half cup of cornstarch. Then um, after that comes some salt and freshly ground pepper for flavorants. And I'm out of pepper, so that's not going to happen. We'll just pretend like it's happening. But I am out of pepper, so that's too bad. Um, let's see, flour, cornstarch, paprika. Now, uh, I did this in, in the episode where I um, just added the paprika to this stage of the, of the, uh, the, the dredge. Um, but paprika burns pretty quickly. So upon re-examination of that technique, I realized what I should do is start by whisking these guys together here, like so, just so they're combined and we got, you know, our nice flour and uh, cornstarch, salt, and supposedly pepper mixture. And then we are extracting um, about, maybe about a cup's worth of this stuff for our dredge. Not too much, just like that. Uh, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Okay, and then this is where we're gonna add the paprika because when we dredge, we're gonna dredge in the flour and then hit it in the beer batter. And that way the paprika will be pr protected by the beer batter and it won't, it, won't, um, it won't burn quite so easily when it's being deep fried. So, ooh, that's dangerous. Don't do that, Andy. Knife away from you. <laughs> Open that guy up. And, uh, not too much of this. That spoon's too big. I'll use a fork. See, this this kitchen's very new, man. You know, just moved in here like two weeks ago, and it's uh, it's taking a little bit of get, getting used to. But you know, that's all you gotta do, right there. And then I'm just gonna swoosh that around a little bit. And we got a nice, flavorful dredging flour into which we can dredge our fillets. And then uh, to this mixture right over here, we got uh, the remaining uh, dr dr uh, flour and, um, and uh, 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 cornstarch. We're going to add um, a teaspoon of baking powder, which again, I have to sort of eyeball. I'd call that about a teaspoon. A uh, teaspoon of baking powder and then um, one whole Mexican beer, which, you know, I'm talking about a 12-ounce uh, uh, Mexican beer, you know, a normal can. But uh, the only thing I could find at the grocery store I went to was, was a tall boy. So I'm going to crack this guy open. A little sip for good luck. Mm. That's beer. Um, and I'm going to get that baking powder incorporated, and then I'm just going to sort of Slowly add this until it reaches my desired consistency. I want it to be like, again, like a pancake batter. So about, so 12 ounces is what? That's a cup and a half. So about a cup and a half worth of beer. That's way too thick. So we're going to keep it going. It's going to be, so this is what, this is a 24 ounce. So half of this is ideally what we're going for. And we want to not overmix this, just like a pancake batter, because it's got flour in it and liquid, and that is, that, that is a recipe for, for gluten. Um, 
So we don't want to overmix it. It can be a little lumpy. Uh, it's very frothy though. I'm having a hard time seeing what's going on. But I think we got a good beer batter going. Let's take a look here. Once the bubbles settle down, we'll, be, we'll have a much better idea of what's going on and we can adjust from there. Yeah, that's, that's looking about right. I got some lumps in there. Not gonna bother me. And it's pretty thin. You know, it's too thin. Uh, so I'm going to adjust. I'm gonna add a little bit of flour back into this. Gotta, gotta hit that nice sort of texture that I'm looking for. I think I overdid it with the, uh, the beer, added too much. Compensate. Gotta be able to improvise, you know, if you're making dinner, you, you wouldn't just move on with this. You wouldn't be like, oh, well, maybe it'll work out. No, you improvise, you, you, you get it where it needs to be, and that, that's looking better. See, it's coating the sides of the, of, the, uh, of the bowl there. That's looking more like pancake batter. Still got some lumps in it. I'm just gonna, you can have a few lumps in there, but I don't want too many. I really want it to be able to, you know, fully coat the fish. And that's looking right about where I want it to be. Okay, so next up, we need to start heating up our oil here. So I'm gonna bring the, uh, the deep fryer over. One moment, here we go. It's coming over. Oh wait, I need an extension cord. <laughs> Uh-oh, I don't have an extension cord. So I guess what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna deep fry it back here over on camera too. This way we can see both at the same time. That's brilliant actually, sort of. Uh, and what I'll do is I will uh, move this camera back and tilt it up so you can see both. Here we go. Learning curves, ladies and gentlemen, learning curves. We're just figuring it out here. There we go. Sorry to take you on a little ride there. And there we go. And let me check focus. We gotta be all focused on that front burner. There we are. You get a little bit wider shot of the kitchen there. That's good. Win-win. Jake, are we still on the phone here? I am okay. still here. Just making sure. What's going on with, uh, with, with the, um, the uh, what's the name of what we're supposed to call them? Oh, well, there was a poll on that. Let me see what the poll says. Oh God, there's uh, a poll on everything. The chat wins. So, so the far chat. we can, right. we can call it the chat. All right. So of what's course going we're on open to chat. changing it whenever necessary. We want to do whatever makes you guys happiest. That's why we're here. Oh, glass is full. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Karis. You. Oh, thank you guys so much for filling the glass repeatedly. It's so kind of you. So nice. Um, so this, uh, this deep fry back here, I'm heating up, I'm plugging it in and I'm setting it to, uh, about 350, 375. And that's going to be where I'm going to fry uh, the French fries, I guess, because that's, that's less intense than the fish. And we probably want to get the fish going up here. So here's this. And then I got a solid, uh, you know, half gallon of uh, vegetable oil here. I'm going to dump into the Dutch oven. There we go. There we go. So it's a little less than half full. That's good because when you drop stuff in there, it really, you know, like a lot of bubbles come up. So you don't want this thing overflowing, starting a grease fire, especially when you have a huge audience watching you because you look like a real dingus. So there we go. Oh, uh, restraints is right. Are we going to get some nice sizzle sound now? Um, yeah, get ready for all different kinds of sizzle sounds right now, guys, because we, we're deep frying two different things at once. I'm going to, it's going to be stereo sizzle. We got sizzle back here. We got sizzle up here. It's, it's, it's an all around sizzle, sizzle fest. I think at some point we need an here. all, all inclusive, um, poll on all the favorite sounds. Yeah, so no, that's a good we'll, idea. We'll get that list together and, uh, we'll get that out. I, I, if our Spencer gaming is still here. Oh, there he is talking about polls. Yeah, maybe maybe we uh, can get that one for us. Pepper grinder, me chewing, uh, deep fryer, um, and grating uh, onions. Grating onions. Also, I'd like to yeah. add when you wipe your hand across the booze block. I really like that. All right, let's head back over to camera one so we can give that a shot, shall we? 
Yeah, just um, a quick wipe across. All right, I'm gonna do a quick wipe uh, across the booze block. I'm hearing that this is possibly a good ASMR. Here we go. How's that feeling? It's certainly yeah, one of the that? more subtle ones, but I really like it, yeah. All right, well, I'm, 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 I, I live to serve. Um, all right, I'm gonna get a couple of my sort of accoutrement out of the way here, so I can more efficiently make this fish efficient. Lee, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. Um, these out of the way, there we go. And uh, you know, I actually might move this over to this burner if you guys don't mind. In fact, that'll be good because then we'll see both. That's brilliant, I just, I'm a brilliant person. Um, except I just, what, what I do with my torch, there it is. I'm gonna move it over and that way I'm not like carrying dripping fish over the, over the you know, the burner. There we go. Get that guy going. Woo, it's like a jet engine. There it goes. Crank it down a little bit. Down we go. Get my garbage back up right here. Now, as far as the french fries, let's go back to camera one. I'm gonna talk about the french fries a little bit. Um, oh, I already talked about the french fries. <laughs> but here, I'm gonna show you what they look like, uh, what they should look like after you've cut them into your desired uh, pieces and then par fried them. You just want a little bit of color on these guys. So here, this is what they should look like. It's a little blown out because of the light. Here we go. If I bring them over here, you can really see. Sorry about the bright light, but you can see, you know, they're just starting to turn a little brown, like right on the edges. They're just, just getting a little bit of color. That's right where you want them. Wow, that's cold. I'm going to go ahead and not touch that anymore. Okay, and uh, let me get um, my temperature probe into the, uh, into the Dutch oven here so I can keep an eye on where this oil is heading. Don't want to overheat it. We want to hit about 350 on the oil there. And uh, then, oh see this is great. Now we got the fries over here, we got the, uh, the fish over here. Everything worked out. Look at that, and I can be right in the center. Like, here's the fish, here's the fries. Look at the difference. Um, all right, we got the batter here. I'm gonna get the cod out and start prepping it, uh, which really is not anything at all. Basically, it's just cutting it in half because I have one big filet and I wanna cut it into two pieces. Here goes nothing. And the beauty of frying fish is that it cooks so quickly that you're really taking it out when the batter is done. Like that's the indicator that it's done, is the batter is nice and brown. As soon as that's done, you know, fish cooks very quickly in the, in, in the hot oil and th this uh, is a very delicate, you know, light fish. Where, ooh, I, feel, I just felt a bone. I wanna get it out of there. Oh yeah, there's a bone. Mustn't have a bone in a fish fry, give me a break. So uh, this fish is cod, for anybody who's wondering if you're, if you're following along at home. Cod is my preferred, wow, this is full of bones. This has a ton of bones in it. I can't really get them out. Hang on. Wow. This is just all bones. Okay. Uh, what I need are like needle nose pliers or something. Maybe Okay, so I've got a bony, a bony situation here. I'm very gentle with these scissors. Can I get them out? Oh, jeez. They're really in there. Wow. This is uh, disappointing. Um, they're really only in this part of the fish, so I'm tempted to just cut this part out. Yeah, I can't get these out. Try one more time before I give up and slice these guys up. Oh yeah, I'm pulling this apart. Okay, we're just gonna adjust our expectations a little bit here. And we're just gonna cut that part right out. There we go. And now we're left with a beautiful boneless, and it should be skinless, but a little, little piece hanging on there. Something I've never understood is why 
I've had plenty of fish fries where they leave the skin on. And that blows my mind. Like, why would you do that? Why are you letting half of the breading on the fish, you know, just be completely useless and pointless? This is just chock full of bones and I can't get them out. There is plenty of good fish on here and I don't want to waste it. So I am going to cut this part off and that should be bones free. And then we just got this little hunk here that we got to say goodbye to. And what I'll do is I will cut this into two pieces. So this is going to be more like, um, it's going to be less like a traditional fish fry, more like a, a fish fingers, I guess. <laughs> it's going to be nice thin little pieces. And I don't mind that. I'm fine with that. We're improvising, you know? Just like we did with the batter. The batter's gonna come out fine. The fish is gonna come out fine. I'll wash my hands a little bit here. Get them nice and sanitized. All right. So, got our, got our cod here. Haddock is another great option. Uh, just any, you know, mild white fish is a great way to go when it comes to fish fry. Um, this oil is sitting at 200 degrees. I want to hit about 350. Uh, happily back here, I've got the deep fryer, which is, uh, if you want to switch the camera too, I don't know if we're already there. Happily back here, I've got the deep fryer, which is, it's already hit uh, three, 375, which is right. Actually, I'm going to put it down to 350 um, for the fries because I don't want them to cook too, too fast. I want them to brown evenly and get all nice and perfect. I'm going to another bite of the salmon. As long as we're sitting around here, waiting for stuff. Mmm. Mmm. It's herby and it's got a little bit of lemon to it. Sorry, are we over here? We camera two? My bad. Yeah, I was, uh, you were standing in the middle there. I was making some choices. Okay. I, it's got to be a better way we can do that. <laughs> okay. All right, my oil's good to go back here. I'm gonna stay at camera two for the, for the moment. Actually, okay. you know what? This is gonna be tricky, man, because I, I need to bread the fish on camera one and then fry it in camera two. It's All tricky. right, I'm here. Okay, uh, I will keep you updated. Let, right, let's stay at camera one for right now. And uh, as basically, as soon as, as soon as the fish comes out of the batter, as soon as I'm done dredging it in the batter, it, we go to camera two and we hit it, we hit it in the deep fryer. Nice. All right, so this oil is reaching 250, and uh, I'm going to, I'm at least gonna get the fries into the basket, I guess. So switch to camera two, and let's, let's get the fries going in the basket. So I got the frozen fries here. You can see I drained them on, on paper towels, and uh, they're just lightly fried from their par fry. I'm just gonna put them in, the ba in, in their basket so they're just all ready to go. This is just exactly what would happen in a restaurant. Like they would get frozen fries and then they'd refry them and they come out really, really good that way. It's just the best way to make fries. And don't anybody let me forget to salt these like the minute they come out of the oil. As soon as they're done drip drying, dripping, uh, uh, drying all the oil after hanging in the basket for a few minutes, they need to go, they need to get hit with salt because the salt will only stick while they're hot. Then after that, they become useless under salted fries. There we go. Fries are in the basket. Here, I'll bring them over so you can see. Not that it really truly matters, but there you go. We've got fries in the basket, ready to go. And our oil is breaching 275. I got this, this burner cranking pretty high, so should be ready very, very soon. Um, we can uh, get started. Let's go back to camera one and we can sort of get a kind of advanced, you know, we can start by dredging these guys in flour and they can hang out for a minute until we're ready to hit them with the beer batter. And I know these are really small for fish fry. I know this is not traditional fish fry size, but you know, just, just work with me here. We only had one filet and it had a bunch of bones in it, so we had to ch chop it down a little bit. Normally you can get bones out of fish pretty easy, but this was a, this was a real challenge. Um, didn't want didn't to give up those bones, so we had to, we had to cut them out. 
I had to cut it out of our lives, just like any toxic relationship. We had a toxic relationship with those bones. Give us your bones! Sorry. Steve Brule, anybody? Brule's rules. All right. We got these guys dredged in flour. We are about 75 degrees shy on the frying oil for the fish. So let these guys hang out. They're all nicely dredged in flour. And uh, I'm just gonna drop the fries in because uh, why not? So let's, let's see if we, here, I'm gonna get my mic real close to it and we'll see if we can get some nice ASMR going here. Oh, heavens. Watch, watch like there be an oil explosion and it burns half my face off because I'm trying to get a really good ASMR shot. I'm gonna crank up the oil temperature. I forgot that really cold french fries are going to uh, 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 crank down the temperature of the oil really, really fast. So go ahead and uh, crank the temperature up to 375. Um, but these are, these are sizzling, they're coming along and they'll, they'll heat up in no time. Okay. Fish, on the other hand, is at nearly room temperature and is going to fry beautifully and quickly. And I'm gonna get a plate all ready and get these fishy utensils out of the way. Get this fishy paper out the way. Uh, oil's at 315, we're almost there. I'm gonna give this a little spray with my vinegar solution just to get any fishiness that was left there. And that's perfectly safe, vinegar, you know, it's gonna taste all good with all this stuff, so. You don't have to worry about getting it on there like you would Windex or something. All right, these guys are coming along nice. Because they're frozen, they're coming up to temperature, they might stick together a little bit. Just move them around a little, make sure they're not sticking. And they are frying nicely. Okay. Wipe up this mess. Okay, and we get a plate ready. Oh, all the big plates are in the dishwasher. Let's get one out the dishwasher. These are clean, by the way, just in case you're wondering. And I know you were. I sure was. All right, here's a plate for where we're gonna finish everything up. Ideally, you want to um, finish this up on uh, some, some so like a brown paper bag that you cut open. Brown paper bags apparently are the best surface upon which to eat fried foods because they uh, soak up oil without without making the fried food too soggy. So that's why you ideally want, but I mean, come on, I don't have any brown paper bags kicking around. Um, so I'm just not gonna do that and I'm sorry. Um, it's still gonna taste mighty good, I promise. So I got my batter here, it's nice and thick. Um, it's gonna coat the fish real good and it's gonna fry up real good and it's just all gonna be real good. Let me get rid of this whisk. And the fries are frying up nice. Oil's come back up to temp. I'm just gonna make sure they're not sticking together too much. Or nice separate fries. I don't know about you guys, but I like my fries separate. So, just pay attention to what's going on in, in your world. Okay, now, what's going on with you guys? Thank you guys for following. I'm seeing, I'm seeing an almost full tip jar. Thank you so much. And uh, you know, just so you can see things better, maybe I should turn this camera. Maybe that'll make this a more immersive experience. Let's turn it. All right, now, yeah, now you can see the, oh, there's a monitor in the way, shoot. Uh, whatever, you can still see what's going on here. I'll move the, I'll move the camera in. There we go. Look at that, huh? There we go. You can see everything. And I'll put this monitor on the floor and just pretend like it's, I can see what's happening. Okay, let me zoom in, make sure everything's in focus. There we go, lovely focus. And let's get to frying some fish, shall we? So, this just hit 360. That is just about right. And uh, we're not gonna turn down the heat just yet because we're about to introduce a whole bunch of 
relatively cold fish into the environment, so it's gonna drop the oil temperature a bit. And if you let it drop too far, you're gonna end up with some soggy breading, so don't do that. All right, oh nice. Nicely dredged, nicely coated fish. All right, and get it nice and drip dried and gently uh, drop it in. So same deal over here. Try to keep them separate once they get in the oil because they will stick together in the early stages. And then as soon as that crust hardens up a little bit, they won't stick together so much. So I'm gonna try and steer clear of that first one. There we go. And don't do what I just did. What you wanna do is, um, you know, the, the, this fish you can see it has a clear thick side and a thin side. And you wanna hold it by the thin side because that way you can, there's less of a splash when you drop it down in. So here we go, I got it by the thin side. And I'm just gonna gently lay it down in. See, there's a lot less commotion there. Fries are frying up nice. And as my man Brad Leone would say, we're just letting everything get a little nice and nice. Which, I'm seeing Brad in two weeks. We're gonna do another crossover episode. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to spoil that or not, but that's what we're doing. I'm not ashamed to say it. Very excited, I won't tell you what it is, but we're gonna be making some yummy stuff. Surprise, surprise. But I've missed Brad a lot. Brad had a kid, for anybody who doesn't know what's going on. Brad uh, had, his, had a child and is a father, uh, uh, twice a father now. Um, I believe this is his second child. So hats off to Brad, you're doing it, doing it right. I'm just making sure my fries aren't stuck together too much here. There we go. I wish you could see what's going on here. Sorry about that. All right, and I'm actually gonna use these same tongs to inspect the fish. Oh, the fish is stuck to the bottom of the pot. That's fun. There we go. Lifted right off. Just be gentle. Be gentle, be careful. Try not to strip all the precious breading off your beautiful fish filet. But I think it's, oh, there we go. There goes that one. Yeah, you gotta be careful of them sticking when you first drop them in. You gotta try to move them. I almost forgot about that, or I did, I totally did forget about that. Turning down the temperature because it's starting to get a little hot. You gotta keep them moving as soon as they get in there, otherwise they stick to the bottom. You can see that. I don't know if you can see that. I assume you can see it. But um, it's stuck to the bottom a little bit, but it's totally fine. All good here. Those are looking gorgeous. Jake, you still with me? Oh yeah, I'm with you. I'm seeing the comments. People love Brad. People are so happy for him, and so am I. Such a nice yes. guy. Vinny too. Two of the best. Yeah, Brad and Vinny, you know, peas in the pod. Couldn't couldn't imagine life without without them. Thank you, Brad and Vinny, for being who you are and bringing us joy on a day-to-day -day basis in the culinary in a fun way. We hope that we do the same for you here at Benjamin McFavish. All right, so fries are looking good. They're almost there. The fish is almost there. It's really coming along. And the way I'm going to drain these is on, um, on a metal rack because, uh, you know, paper towels, they're gonna serve to make your fish a little mushy. We don't want that. So I got myself a nice, uh, uh, a uh, um, baking sheet with a, a rim baking sheet with a, with a cooling rack in it or a wire rack in it. And that's gonna be perfect place for our fish to hang out after it's oil bath. I'm gonna give them a little flip, just make sure they're getting even distribution of heat here. They're looking gorgeous, they're looking beautiful. Oh, God. Ah. Ooh, I just got splashed. A little bit of hot oil. That's hot. Ow. Okay. Heat down a little bit. One of the many hazards of good food is that you, 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 you generally hurt yourself in the process. Ooh, I can smell it through the door now. That is so Ooh. nice. Ooh. You can smell it through the door. That's a sign of... That's good eating when you smell it through the door. It's good eating. Smell it right through that door. <laughs> These french fries are feeling crazy crisp. I'm just gonna take them out, 
we uh, switch the camera too real quick? I'm on we'll take them out for brother. Okay. Oh, you can't see it. I'm sorry. You can't see it from that far away. But when they're when they're when they're done, I'll pull them out and uh, we'll drain them. We'll take a look at them. They're 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 looking gorgeous. They're gonna be fabulous. I'm super excited about them. All right. Oh, the fish is looking great. But it is splattering like a mother. Ideally, you want a splatter guard at, at this juncture, but I don't have one, so. I'm just weathering it and enjoying all the little, the little micro burns all over my skin. Oh, okay. Oh, I got my, my nice uh, Modelo beer here that I can, nice Mexican beer I can enjoy. While I'm waiting for my fish to come out the, out the fryer. This is a great, I, I mean, you know, guys, tomorrow's Friday and Friday is fish fry night. Ask any restaurant. Um, and uh, so, you know, this was not hard. This took what, 30 minutes tops? And, it, and, and that's because I'm like trying to wrangle three things at once and talking to you guys and stuff. If you're just making this at home by yourself. It'll take no, no time at all. And your family is just gonna love you to death for it. So please. We'd love for you to do it and to send us pictures. We would love for you to do it. Tag me on Instagram. Benjamin with Babish. I want to. I want to see your your creations. Okay. I want to see how yours came out. Man, post it in the subreddit. Yeah. Post it. Post it in the subreddit. Tag it on Instagram. Um, uh, tag me on on uh, on uh, Twitter. Just hit me from all angles. I want. I want you to. I want you hit me from every imaginable angle with all your beautiful food photos. Okay. Oh yeah, these are looking good. Killer Panda, this will be archived, I believe, on YouTube and also Twitch. Uh, Twitch, it doesn't last forever. Um, the Twitch, the, the 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 Twitch videos, they're available, I think, for 30 days, or maybe more than that, maybe 60 days. But uh, every episode of live stream is uploaded to to YouTube after the fact. So you can you can check out any live stream, cook along anytime you like. I'm taking these fries out the fryer. They're looking done. They're looking done, so I'm gonna hang those up, let them drain for a little bit until they're not totally dripping with oil, and then I'm gonna season them up, and we're gonna freaking eat them. Because that's, that's how we do it, you know? All right, I'm killing the heat on this, because I think these guys are ready to come out. They're looking really nice and gold. Look at that, I mean, come on. Come on. Critically acclaimed. Happy to hear you made the pizza. Hey, you made the pizza. Thanks, critically acclaimed. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh, are you seeing this fish? Oh, that's golden nights. Look at this friggin' fish. This looks better than it did on the episode. It's got this crazy crispy shell on it. Like the shell around it is, is insane. Okay, fish is out. Fish is donezo. And tongs I'm gonna put right there. I'm gonna recenter the camera because this is where we're gonna eat. So I'm gonna I'm gonna recenter it. Pardon the uh, pardon me while I run and 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 adjust here. I'm gonna I switch to the camera so there. they can experience the shake. Is that what people want? Okay. That's what you're gonna get. All right. This is where we started. Let me know when you're ready. Well, we're ready. Let's go. Shake it up. Here we go. I'm gonna let there you look you to the left too. There's stuff Ooh, over there. Stuff. Wow. Lucky lucky audience. <laughs> Um, all, right. all right, let me check focus here. I just gotta make sure the plate's in focus. There we go. And I think we're good to go. Does that look crooked at all? Does it look straight? I feel like that's looking crooked. Let's try yeah. that. That's looking better. I feel, is it, is that looking better now? I just adjusted it. Okay. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, I'm gonna double check. All right, focus is good. You know, you guys know I went to film school, right? That's my original vocation. Okay, uh, let me get a big old bowl going here to season our fries. And uh, you, you, if, if you thought, this is where the ASMR is gonna happen, man. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna grab the monitor so you can see what I'm doing. I just wanna make sure that I'm, everything's all nice and centered. You know, right, you, know, you guys know how I, you thank go. you. And you guys know how I like symmetricality and 
I want to make sure that everything's nice for you. So look at that. That's perfectly centered. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to dump the French fries into this bowl and you're going to hear, oh, like jewels, like crispy jewels. So let's take a look. Oh, look at that, huh? Look at them fries. That's what I'm talking about. And I heard from some British folks that, uh, my fries were not thick enough. So these are extra thick for the thick boys. You know what I'm talking about? These are thick, thick fries for the thick boys. And I'm going to re really salt the hell out of them. Not all of it's going to stick. And what's, what's worse than under salted fries? Am I right? I'm going to give you guys a little tossy toss action here. There you go. Oh, this one I like having that uh, fast uh, shutter speed. I'm going to try one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to eat it into the mic so you can hear it. Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm. Oh, it's hot. But, oh, it's good. Woo! Oh, it's good. Alright. Whoa! That's hot. <laughs> Woo! Okay. But, god, they're beautiful. They're perfect. Look at how perfect those are. Jeez. Alright. Let's dump them on the plate. All of them, because we're we're going we're going ham tonight. We're going ham with our fries and our fish. Let me gra let me grab the fish. You can come to camera two if you want to see the fish grabbing action. But it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it is something. And you can hear that crunch so nice on that mic. Oh yeah, that's no, really this nice. is this is the yeah. crunchiest crunch that's ever crunched, man. Got some crunchy stuff happening here. Look at that. That's oh, a fish yeah. fry. Come on. Give me a freaking break. Come on. Come on. Um, all right. So now all that's left to do is uh, grab a uh, ramekin full of tartar sauce. So I'm going to fill up this ramekin with our homemade tartar sauce. This didn't come out of no jar. I'll tell you that much. This didn't come out of no jar. This was made by our hands. I'm just going to fill this guy up because I have a feeling we're going to go through all of it. I'm also going to get the thing full of ketchup going too because, uh, wait, do I own ketchup? Yes, I do. Mm. Okay, ketchup. A smaller thing of ketchup for the fries. Come on now. There we go. Get that ketchup going. Sorry, I know it's not Heinz, but it's all I could get at the time. All right, let me get all this strenuous crap out of the shot. I want, I want a nice oh. clean. I don't think we have here. any malt vinegar. People are asking for malt vinegar, but I don't know if we have. Oh any no, I do I have. I do have malt vinegar. I have malt vinegar. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes, I do. I do. I forgot. This is this is this is British. We got to do malt vinegar, of course. Now, do you guys just dump it directly on the fries or do you like dip it? I'm curious. I don't want to dump it directly on because that's going to make them all soggy. Oh my God. Mmm. That's not very good ketchup, but those are good fries. Mmm. Now, let's get that malt vinegar very in the shot so nobody can say that I didn't do this right. Yeah, everybody's saying dump it on. That's the craziest British nonsense I've ever heard. Um, why would you do that? You're just going to make them so soggy. All right. Oh, look at that. Let's, let's bust this guy open, shall we? Let's bust right in. Have a look inside. Oh, yeah. Flaky, tender fish. Smells great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoon uh, the sauce upon it so I don't make too much of a mess here. There we go. I got myself a nice... Mmm. Oh, my God. Oh, so good. Mmm. Looks like a giant chicken nugget. 
Oh, so moist and crisp. Yeah, this would be on the clean plate club if I wanted to die, but I need help. So, Jake, whenever you're ready, you can come on out here and help me with this. Oh, music to my ears. Here I come. Hmm. Ah. How do we do this, this small thing? Are we just dump it on top? That's crazy. You know, you do the thumb and you shake. But I mean, it's just gonna make everything soggy. All right, here you go, people. Are you happy? All right, that's how All we right. do. That's, All right, bloody knackered. That's really, really, really hot. So be careful. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's bloody knackered, mate. Got, got to be careful with that fish. Mm. Knock your tits off. Sorry. I'll grab some of this, some of this malt vinegar. Hmm. All right, it's a good choice, but you have to eat it fast because it's just gonna get soggy. Right, right. Right, right. Thank you all for your mm. contribution. Delicious. Mm. Oh man, that's some fish fry right there. If I've ever had fish fry, and I have, because I'm from Rochester. All right, well, hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming, dude. Mm. I see Sawyer more than I see any human being, because he, he has his, his office set up here, and we That's work together, life. so. That's work, any working guy knows. That's who you see the most in life. Hmm. Which is always like, if anyone's mean to you at work, what are you doing? We all have to be here, relax, you know? Hmm. Wise words, man. Oh, you want a sip of a beer? Go I ahead. want a sip of a yeah, beer, yeah. Enjoy that. Ah, uh, ooh yeah, knock that thing down. Whew. What are they saying? What do they want? Why are there no Rochester, peas? New what? York. Yeah, Rochester, New York, of course. Not Rochester, oh. Minnesota. Who do you think we're talking about? No way. Forget about it. Though there is a Rochester, Minnesota. Of course. We're just up here telling some giggle, giggle bones and some. Peas is a typical. Uh... This ketchup is crap. Something's off with that ketchup. I agree. It's the, it's the yeah, it's the Whole Foods ketchup. Whole Foods brand ketchup. It's really fruity. Three sixty five. It's too sweet. Yeah. It's it's too sweet. Mm. Everybody here, yeah, we just said that at the mm. same time. Oh my god. Oh, that's all right. Oh. Mm. All right, all right, all right. All right, we'll check the poll for what everyone's favorite AMSR is, and uh, make sure we do a bunch of it. <laughs> Next time. Every live stream. We're listening. Mm. I'm betting it's going to be the pepper, which is good because we can do that every episode. Mm. I did love the pepper. Mm. I wonder if your sound's any different through the, that mic. <sighs> distance eating, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I love fried food. It's hard not to. <sighs> so what do you guys think? Anybody else make this at home? You guys, you guys anybody enjoying this on their, on the, in their, in their house home? Sorry, I took part of your fish here. Hmm. Nice. Oh, it's, it's not a, it's not a clean meal. This certainly isn't good for you, but in moderation, you know, fry some stuff up, man, because some of the best foods were born of necessity. That's where frying came from. Really? Mm hmm There's Things like, uh, deep Southern cuisine. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just fried everything. Like it's a, it's a way to, to make something tasty out of something that might be normally tough. Sure, sure, you know. sure. What's left? Uh -huh. So, 
it's a delicious way to eat things. Oh. And thank you guys for suggesting the malt. Somebody probably would have called would have called me out on that later on. I wish I did that in the episode. A lot more people saw that. Mm. Next time. Oh. Well, Jake, thank you very much for your help. Of course, thanks for having me as always. We'll get better. That sound, that song won't hurt you next time. I promise. <laughs> we're, we're we're learning. It's just the two of us here. You know, this isn't this isn't like. Uh, I don't know, something. <laughs> it's, some, some big fancy television channel. Yeah. It's forget just about it. two guys. Forget about it. Just two guys doing the best they can. Having a good time eating a fry. You know? <laughs> Having a good fry and a fry up. That's what it is. <laughs> well, I want to leave a little bit of food on the plate. So that's good for finishing up and then we can eat that later. But. All right. <sighs> take some. Well, thanks, dude. Thanks for the help, man. Thank you. I'll go uh, finish up stuff. And I'm going to come down and talk to y'all. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's a little short. Um, thank you guys very much for tuning in. This is the first uh, live stream at the new apartment. Couldn't be happier with the way the food came out. Um, and thank you very much to my dear friend and business partner, Sawyer, who has been running this whole thing from behind the curtain and helping me eat the food. Expect to see a lot of him in the near future. He's one of the thick boys. And, uh, and he's going to be helping me eat stuff. He's going to be helping me enjoy stuff in this and, and make new and bigger and better content for you guys. So thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. Um, I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys make this yourself. Please take pictures. Tag me on Instagram. Share it in the subreddit, in, in the Binging with Babish subreddit. Uh, uh, tag me on Twitter. You know, Text it to me if you have my number. I hope you don't. But if you do, text it to me. Um, and, uh, I hope you, I hope you enjoy it. Hope you try it yourself and, uh, and, uh, keep cooking, you know, thank you guys so much for hanging out and I'll see you guys in two weeks. We got one more episode of basics coming up, uh, from round three of shooting. And then I've got the crew coming here. We're going to be shooting a whole new batch of basics. So leave comments, um, about what you want to see in future basics episodes, go to the subreddit. That's where I'm seeing most of these comments. Go to the Binging with Babbage subreddit and tell me what you want to see on basics next, what technique you want to see break, broken down so we can uh, make it together and enjoy it like this. And thank you guys. Cheers. Here's to you. Have a good night. <laughs>